this live on air. They fucked over us on iTunes. They literally dis... They're not allowing anyone to download our stuff on iTunes, and I don't know why, so they ain't getting my 40 fucking dollars a month. Woo! Um, new MPN shirt. Fuck blog talk. Hashtag, hashtag hash brown fuck blog talk. <laughs> yeah, John, <laughs> uh, John was telling me that the other day, and then I tried to contact them. They gave me the runaround, and they can go seriously go fuck themselves. Whoa! Hash brown fuck blog talk right here. Oh, well. They decided to. I decided where. Where is it in the best interest to give them forty fucking dollars a month for what? Where we can promote yeah. it. Where we can promote it better on Facebook as well as uh, YouTube. So we can promote well, it better. The thing is, the funny thing is, hardly people on English. Podcasts really are starting to die now. It's mostly Twitch and YouTube and Spotify. Well, Spotify, I still have my anchor stuff, so I can still upload through Spotify. It's just taking, it's just, it's hard for me to get the sh- everything onto Spotify. Yeah, because most people, why download shit in iTunes when you can just listen to it on Spotify? No, it's not even iTunes anymore. It's Apple Podcast. What? Yeah, it's not even technically. It's not even iTunes anymore. They split it. It's i. It's Apple Music and uh, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, Apple. Fuck yourself. Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thank you. Come again. Yeah. I mean, some bands just I, I refuse to be on Spotify. I'm like, you're fucking dumb because you're killing your audience. Like, Man of War put their early shit on there and some other shit, but nothing later. Makes no sense. That could be why. <laughs> My microphone came unplugged. Ah! Yeah, it's not I'm a like, good idea. That's not a good thing. All of a sudden, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you, John, for telling me that shit. Definitely. Holy shit! That is like ridiculous. John, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I told you it's like I tried to go listen to some of the older stuff, and it just wouldn't allow it. I couldn't listen to it. I couldn't download it. I couldn't do any of that stuff. Oh no, so. yeah. And then I was like trying to, and then they gave me the run around. I'm like, nope. Fuck you. I ain't paying you forty dollars a month then for for what? Once ever, whenever I get the new computer, I just will ask to get the, uh, what's it called? Um, I just need to get a soundboard. The soundboard and whatever you got to do to get callers? No, if we actually do have callers? I'd rather, you know what, if we get callers, uh, I'll get another line on Skype. I'll get a second, I'll get a second number on Skype. Because yeah. then they can call in on Skype, so I'd rather do that. It's easier that way. In in all honesty, it's easier that way. Yeah, on the one app I'm on, like people didn't listen like live, but they listened like the next day or two days from now. From so, what yeah. I've noticed, we get a lot more views in the long run on Twitch. Like we'll get stuff the next day or we'll get in two days. Dude, I've been streaming literally the last couple days I've been streaming for like five hours a day and I've been getting decent views. I just, I just, yeah, I, I just beat God of War yesterday. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know about uh, the YouTube. So I just, like what, on the app, I just posted on freaking Twitch. That's I'm like Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. That's fine. Honestly, we make we we can make we can actually make a decent amount of money on just doing Twitch. And but uh, I think the last time we checked. The move. The last video I did was the movie review. We did was Christmas Vacation one. I haven't posted the program up yet. Um, was Christmas Vacation one, and it had like fifteen views. I'll t- I'll tell you right now. If we are talking that on Monday, that will get a lot of views on that app. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, uh, I let let me put together. When, when, I usually go through Sunday and do everything. Uh, Ryan, 
had an idea. I'll, I'll wait for him to get here and when we're off air to talk about it. Yeah, I'm not talking about the draft. I'm talking about no, no, just no, no, no. No, breaking that down. Something else. I'm just saying is when Ryan gets on, he'll, I'll let him explain it. Yeah. Uh, but Because right. it's a lot. <laughs> So no music intro. I'm just going to go right into it, all right? Oh, no music? Damn. You guys aren't going to hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you think about it, you guys ain't going to be able to hear it. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right, so in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Nerd Zone on the Nerdport Network. On today's episode... We dive back into the NFL playoffs. We dive into the bigger stories of the week, as well as, you know, the NBA and NHL pretty much telling uh, the league or the governments and leagues to go fuck themselves. That much, much more. But no music today. But with that being said, I am your host, Stefan Ronnie, and with me as always. It is I, Trips, and the offseason is upon us. As well as the zombie master and the stunt cock and Christian will be joining us in a little bit. Oh boy. So where do we want us begin? Do we want to do the quick NFL stuff? Because there's one hit that was on fa- that I put on Facebook about Jalen and the Eagles actually came out with something. Wait, what? Remember how I put up a tease at the beginning of the week? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the Eagles actually came out with something. Yeah, they're behind him. Yep, they are <laughs> behind him. See, Damn right, and they should be. Um, I would probably just hit part two of Djokovic versus Australia. Okay. Yeah. So... If you've not listened to last week's show, go back on Twitch and listen to it, please. Uh, But we talked about Joker, um, Djokovic, uh, best tennis player in the world, being held up at a court of law in Australia for not being vaccinated, pretty much. That's the gist of it. Um... So, leading up to now, he has officially uh, been detained again and has been deported and is not playing in the Australian Open. They moved fast with that appeal, I'll tell you that. Damn. And and you want fast? The French Open has barred him. Uh, Oh, yeah, and um, I, I heard that. If he wants to even get into Spain, he has to be vaccinated. Spain is not the issue right now. If you're talking majors, it's the French Open is no, so that's clay. He never wins on clay anyway, so that's not a big deal. Uh, uh, it's Wimbledon, which it's in July, so who knows what the vaccine hold that whole thing is for right now. And then uh, September or uh, late August for the U.S. Open in New York. Which... They, they... Oh, ahead. sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying, um, tennis needs a governing body that basically has rules set. Like, if if you have to be vaccinated, then you have to be vaccinated. No ifs, ands, or buts. Or, you know, unless, like, you are immunocompromised and you you know, physically cannot be. But they need a governing body like other sports have, even though some of them, like, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get into the NHL in a little bit. I wasn't even talking about that. I was talking about, like, the NFL. Oh, and no. Fuck. Oh, no. I got news about the NHL. We'll get to that. I, I literally have not watched any NHL because the Flyers are so, so we'll, goddamn we'll, we'll, bad. We'll get to that, but um, no. So the one thing is is the fact that he, French Open he never wins on clay. So I mean, I think he won twice on on clay out of twenty one out of twenty fucking majors. I'm not uh, I'm not really 
worried about him being barred <laughs> from the French Open. Um, the thing is, too, is is th- what was weird about this is the fact that, yes, he was not vaccinated. He is perfectly okay with not playing if the say say that. But because he had COVID, it was the fact that he is technically immune. To, he, his immune is res- has the <coughs> antibodies for 90 days. That's what that's what the CDC has come out and said. You have the antibodies for ninety days, so three months. So he ended up doing all this, giving all the stuff to Australia, the Australian judges. The judges said okay. Then immigration said no because you need a vaccine to get into Australia, but yet you let him in anyway. Okay. Uh, then another judge said he's fine. They deport. They held him again, and then a another judge said no. I believe the judge was more was the high, they took it to a higher court, so they took it to a different judge in part of their Supreme Court. And he sided with the immigration he, minister. Yes, he sided with the immigration, and they deported him out of there. Here's the problem. All this is. Like him not playing, I don't think is that big of a deal. It's the fact that the CDC has said that you are technically vaccined and vaccinated up to ninety days because you have the antibodies. If you've gotten COVID, positive. Well, positive. You had a positive test. Um. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. no. Um, doesn't. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, the CDC is the U.S. Wouldn't it be more the WHO? It's the same. The CDC is going off the WHO. All right. Well, we'll get to the CDC because they're dancing around their own shit. College basketball. Yeah. Uh. Hold on. All right. Yeah, because I thought it was the WHO, but they usually say the same things anyway, so. Yeah, no, the WHO and the CDC are working side by side. So, ah. so yeah, it's that. But the CDC is starting to put their own little bits and pieces in for America, but they're going off of what the WHO has been saying. Ah. Yeah. But, John, did you have any opinion on this? Not really. No? Because I don't know the first thing about... I've heard it. I've heard the well, story. I've seen it on the news, but I really don't care. Okay. No, I was going to say a better question is, did you have any questions? Like, did you, do you have any, like w- what you're wondering? That's, no, that's it's, more. you that's... know, it's, it's pretty much, you know, you guys said it all. So there's nothing really for me to add to it. I mean, there's nothing really else to add. You just said it all. And, and he's also been perfect. He's come out in the open and has perfectly said, Hey, listen, I know I'm not vaccinated. I'm perfectly okay with that. If I don't play, I don't play. But I took a shot in the dark. For everyone to be up in arms about it, I think what what I'm more upset about is the fact that they told him yes. And then backtracked. If they instantly said no, I don't this is not a story. No, there wouldn't be. No, this is not a story. When one judge said yes, and then it came through with Australian media, and the actual like public was outcrying about it, saying, wait a minute, he's getting special treatment, so what about this and that? Then Australia sort of had to save face. Right. And either you can perpetrate the lie or you get to the truth and you fix it, which is what Australia did. So yeah. even though one judge, another judge said yes, and a higher judge sided with immigration when I uh, remember when the thing I read to you that the lawyer said that the immigration minister has like complete discretion in these situations. Right. There it is. So other news real quick, because that's really it with that. Um, University of Michigan announced a 
40, this is from the AP, uh, announced a $490 million settlement uh, Wednesday with more than 1,000 students that said they were sexually assaulted by sports doctors over four decades. <sighs> Obviously, this is spinning off of the Naster incident with the U.S. Olympic team and Michigan State. So is this University of Michigan Ann Arbor, or are we Ar- talking East Lansing? No, this is Ann Arbor. This is M- this is MU. This is Wolverines. Oh, so that's totally new. Yikes! Yeah. So apparently, it went through other. <sighs> well, those sports doctors lost their job. Well, I wonder if it was, it was past doctors. I don't think it's doctors that are from now, but this is stuff that's been uh, 460 million, 30 million set aside for claims. Uh, da, 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 da. Resolved all survivors. This is over 40 years. Doc said Dr. Robert, Dr. Robert Anderson sexually abused them during their routine medical examinations. Oof. Here's the worst part. It does not specify if it was men or women. Uh, yeah. I mean, women. I mean, I, I, I women yeah. is, is the latter. We kind of, with all the stuff that's been going on with Naster and shit like that, yeah. we kind of knew. You knew shit was probably going down in some way, even though they shouldn't have. But it does not specify how many were men and how many were women, because it does not say all were women. Yeah, guy, guys, like I remember this back in high school that we had a doctor. You, you know the thing when you get a checkup, a sports checkup, the doctor has to actually check down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Turn and cough. Not a prostate exam, the other one. Turn and cough. Yep, turn and cough with them cold ass hands. Can we just can we just tell this guy, uh, and I'm going to use a uh, line from John, can we string him up by his go-betweens and tie him behind a, it's, it's Michigan, right? Can we get a Ford truck and tie him by his go-betweens and drag him down the street? Christ. Hey, he wants to grab their go-betweens, let's grab his. Oh, boy. No, I mean, because I just remember that. I mean, nowadays, if a doctor yanks or pulls there, that could be construed as sexual abuse. I imagine so, because, like, back in high school, like... Oh, yeah, no, it's... it. Listen, it is, it's, it's what it is. Oh, yeah, some were definitely men, because the physical for multiple athletic teams, including football. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, I remember that because we had a doctor and it, that we nicknamed him Dr. Happy Hands. And yeah, mm. a lot of the guys decided to get their sports physicals by their personal doctor because of him. Yep. John, what do you think of that? String him up by his go betweens? Put him between, no, tie him between his go betweens and tie it to two trucks and then have them both going in another direction. Well, we're in Michigan, so good old Ford trucks. Yeah, so let a truck go east and west, and then... Let his boys go south and north? I'll let them go wherever they want, because it's disgusting, and I have nothing to say about that that's going to be positive. No. So. Uh, John, there is some baseball news that happened yesterday. Yeah, there's going to be no baseball this fucking year, so beside the point. I... What? I would not worry about that. You fucking heard me. There's going to be no... I'm sick and tired of this, because every time I turn on... I look on the internet. This one's complaining. Oh, they. Oh, we we don't like what they said. Well, I don't like what they said. Well, I don't like what they said. Let's just face facts. There's going to be no baseball this year because one million. This one. This one set of player millionaires doesn't want to play well with the owner millionaires, and Manfred's too much of a pussy to sit there and say, "Fuck it, we're playing baseball under the old collective bargaining agreement until you can get this shit hashed out." So that season and the fans aren't affected, but he's not a man enough to do that. So I pretty much come to realization there's going to be no baseball this year. So I'm not even going to think about it. Period. 
Uh, wash my hands. I wash my hands of it. I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. Well, it, it's it's all sports. I'm sick and tired of these millionaires thinking, oh, well, if I you see, I can't make my million dollar Maserati payment this month, so I should be. I gotta. Be, I'm 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 being put under the gun. I means I might have to get a real job. Go oh, fuck yourself. Put your fucking overpaid millionaire weenies. All of them. All sports. They're gonna. They're gonna play. It's it's all no. it's all bargaining agreements right now. It's all just it ain't happening. I'm calling it now. It ain't happening. And if it does, it's not going to be happening until maybe May or June. Dude, they have they. I would not think personally. I do not think they would have any effect on the season until after the Super Bowl. Gonna it's going to be affected because the players are supposed to the pitchers and catchers are supposed to report by the 14th. The last time I checked, that's in less than three and a half weeks. That's the Super Bowl. Then here's the other thing. Here's the other point that nobody's bringing up. None of these players have been allowed to work out and rehab at the professional stadiums with the teams. So guys that are coming off of injuries are being able to have to rehab at home without the proper equipment. So they're going to show up on X amount of day whenever the fucking season starts, if it starts. They're going to show up. They're not going to be properly rehabbed. Then guess what? They're going to get re-injured, and then they're going to miss another season. And players are going to get hurt, and big stars are going to be knocked out because, like I said before, crybaby millionaires can't seem to get their shit together. So as far as I'm concerned, and baseball, done with it. Wash my hands and feet of it because the simple reason is they want to cry and bitch and moan. Great. So when you finally do open up and your attendance is down almost 50% because fans have had it with this bullshit, they'll wonder why. They're like, oh, why aren't the fans coming back? Because you fucked over the fans one, two more many times and we're sick and tired of it. So now we're going to affect your pocketbooks. So now you're the ones that are going to be sitting there crying poverty and you're going to be wondering why the f- give a fuck anymore. That's why. Well, they've already been doing that when they start charging. Um, well, they charge the fucking four hundred dollars for a game on a Tuesday against the Twins. Yeah, but I said my piece. Fuck them. Hello, Ryan. Hi, guys. The tension's well, nice. <laughs> um. So, how far apart are the sides? They just they met the other day. They said uh, the owners proposed something. The players, players' association basically laughed in their faces. Yeah, they proposed the floor. The, dude, it's that's negotiation one hundred and one. The owners are going to come back with the floor. The players are going to come back with the ceiling, and they're going to meet in the middle. Oh boy, that's Not always happen. That's always how it's been. This is a little different yeah. than this is a little different than the COVID shit. The COVID stuff was bullshit because you were asked, they were asking for full year pay for playing half a season. That is, it, this is a little different. The player, the owners came out with the bare minimum that they'll go. The players are going to come out with the maximum that they will be able to do. They will meet in the middle and be fine. Well, meet in the middle eventually. It's going to yeah. be like I said, another, they, they have another proposal. Another, yeah. They have until Super Bowl before you start seeing fans. Really start getting pissed off because right now football's rule, uh, rule, rule in the fucking day. Let me put you this way: I know there's a lot of guys that I'm friends with that on Facebook that are Met fans, and I I could probably poll about half of them, and half of them are like, "The season ain't happening." Yeah, and a lot the of season those, ain't happening. And a lot of those other people will will think that the 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 Mets are going to go zero uh, and one hundred and sixty three. Well, you know what it is? It's not so much that uh, it's not. I'm not talking about just the Met fans being insane, but that's just it just seems to be like it's the consensus of baseball fans in general is the fact that uh, a lot of people are thinking baseball is not going to happen because of the simple reason is owners and players just can't agree. I've seen YouTube videos about it. I've seen news reports about it. And I've seen tweets from players about it. I've seen tweets from owners about it. 
the owners are blaming the players. They're saying, oh, you're this, 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 this. The o- and then the turn around the players, they're blaming the owners for this, 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 and this. So basically, it's basically, uh, fuck you. No, fuck you. No, wait, wait a minute. I said fuck you first, so fuck you. You know, that's basically what it is. <laughs> What's your name? To- Tony. Me. Fuck you, Tony. Fuck you, Tony. <laughs> What's your name? Ezekiel. Fuck you, Ezekiel. So, all right, so I, I agree definitely am with John on this point that it's going to be proposal after proposal after proposal. I don't know if it is going to get done by Super Bowl. No, I don't think it's, not, get, it's not going think, to. I don't think it's going to get done by Super Bowl, but I think we are going to have a full season. It's going to dig into spring training. I think they have, if I think your real deadline is going to be Super Bowl before people start turning around and being like, all right, and it's going to catch backlash on both ends. I think when Super, when the Super Bowl is over, you are going to hear a fucking uprising from everybody. I would just like to say, if we don't get a full baseball season, I am burning Wrigley Field to the ground. Why Wrigley? I guess. Who cares? Wrigley. What, are you going to just light something on the fucking ivy? Yes. <laughs> Most of that building's over 100 years old. It's going to go right up. You're not wrong. I never thought I'd say thank God for the USFL. Um, this just broke, too. So remember how last year we had Robo Umps and the Atlantic League did the 61 foot mound? Yeah. Yeah, that's gone. Vagal. That's gone. The everything died with that. They don't they no one liked that idea. Wait, what? So remember how the Atlantic League last year had adjusted <coughs> to the season where <laughs> they had a 61-foot mound and robo-umps calling ball, uh, balls and strikes? We had this oh, yeah. We had this when this was going on. Well, that's gone. The only thing that's staying different in the Atlantic League is, a, is uh, the anti-shift rule. Uh... Ch- a change to extra innings, putting runners at first and second to begin the first inning of after regulation. And then lo- they were loading the fucking bases. What the fuck? Wait, wait. So extra innings is no longer one runner on second. Now it's a runner on first and second. Yeah, dude. No, no. Get ready for this. They were loading the bases before that. Why? Just keep one on second in scoring position. It wasn't that hard. This is the Atlantic League. This is the Atlantic League. This is what the Patriots were before the Yankees took over. Uh, And 17-inch bases. Mm. Honest to God, when they did that in single A, it wasn't that big of a difference. It actually made the game faster. Oh, so this isn't Major League Baseball. This is a minor league. Thing. So the Atlantic League, they've been doing with the Atlantic League was giving them pretty much ideas being like, hey, the ridiculous ideas that are not in the minor leagues, we're going to give to you. They go, okay. Huh. And see if it worked. Oh, so they're the guinea pigs. Uh-huh. Uh, got I am so happy that there is no robo umps. And the funny thing is, after the Super Bowl, when people are angry, that's when the Olympics come. So baseball has a little bit of time, to like actually, you know, work behind the curtain until the front and center. Well, so their front and center better be getting on their fucking high horse. Olympics. Wait, what? Said their front and center better get on their fucking high horse. Yeah. John, um, your opinion on that with the uh, the Atlantic League? To be honest with you, I haven't been to a game. I used to go to Patriot games 
about no, well, 10 to 15 times a game a year. I haven't been since they changed all the rules and since they changed all the the different dimensions and stuff like that. And I really don't have any desire well, to. No, I mean, like the fact that they're the we all agreed that we thought the mound getting pushed back might have been a better idea. But no robo umps and they're keeping all the other stuff, the anti shift rule and shit like that. What's your thoughts you know what on, to be on the mound on the mound and the robo um <clears throat> especially more more important I'm gonna say this I'm gonna say this about baseball right now I have such a bitter taste in my mouth for the way the baseball players owners and players are treating fans right now so nothing I say is going to be positive I am just so sick and tired of this because I went through the shit in 94 and I remember how much 94 fucked fans and fucked a lot of teams that the uh, the Expos <laughs> might might have very well won a World Series in 80, in 94 because of how good they were, but the season got fucked because of a bunch of overpaid millionaires. You know, and that left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth. And now they're doing it again. So right now, they could have, they could have uh, it could be Bugs Bunny out there playing baseball. I don't care. I'm right now that baseball right now to me is an evil is a four letter word <laughs> until these guys fucking straighten their ass out. I'm not going to say another fucking word about baseball until these fucking guys straighten their ass out because they're taking away something that I love more than anything. The one sport that I am so passionate about, they're taking it and shoving it right up our asses saying, go fuck yourself. We're millionaires. We'll do what we want. Well, you know what? Go fuck yourself. Period. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Um. Ninety-four. Wasn't wasn't the Mariners and White Sox good that year too? There was a lot of teams that were great that year. Yeah, that was the 94. Yankees. The Yankees were the Yankees were poised to do something <laughs> great in ninety-four. <laughs> Paul O'Neill was flirting with hitting four hundred that year. The Expos were absolutely dominating the NL East. And there was no team that could catch them. As, to, as if the season, if the World Series had been played the day that they called that strike, the Expos would have been in the world, would have been in the playoffs. And there's no team that could have that could have touched them that year. They were that good. And they got fucked by the strike. They came back the next year. That's when they disappeared. Not too long after that is when they got disbanded and they were shipped off to Washington and then they were never the same. So the people in Montreal got fucked. Oh, yeah. The people, baseball fans, not just the Expo fans, baseball fans in a nutshell got fucked. Well, the game hasn't been the same since 94. The right. game and hasn't so been the same. They, all, tried to, they tried to get so more all people I know back is, in. They tried to get people back in with Maguire Sosa and didn't work. It worked for a little bit. But well, you know then... what? All I, I know say, is man, for a while, Bush Stadium was packed every home game. Now you probably can't. Now you probably now they'll be lucky if they can give tickets away. They can give them all to me. I got plenty of friends. But the whole point I'm going to make is with this: it's like some look. I've never forgotten '94. I might still be a baseball fan, but I never forgave them for '94. Right now, 2022. They might be putting the knife in the heart, my heart, period, permanently with this. Because I'm sick and tired of this. Every few years, they got to sit there and whine and cry. Well, you see, if we don't make $10 million a year, then how are we going to make our Maserati and mansion payments? How are we going to make our alimony payments to our six wives? How are we going to pay child support to the 20 kids we got? Because I'm playing a kid's game and I'm not getting paid the millions I deserve. Go fuck yourselves, but you overpaid fuckheads. I swear to Christ, they're all a bunch of overpaid millionaires. I could look, I could probably go out there and pick 25 guys right now, just regular guys off the street and say, Would you play baseball for nothing? I can guarantee I can get 25 guys to play not, for nothing because they love the sport so much. What happened to the love of the fucking sport? When did the sport become that much of a business that 
That's all they care about. When the money uh, ball. When the owners started getting four hundred billion dollars in TV revenue. <laughs> Am I wrong? I was gonna say that's because they uh, listen. I'm not saying that I wouldn't pay for free, play for free, but if I see the owners making four hundred billion dollars in TV deal, I kind of want a percent of that too. If I not mean, anything, a small percent, and if not for me to go to the minor leaguers that are getting paid nothing. I mean, I was I was wondering about the ninety four thing because I remember reading NSI that like Griffey was killing it that year. Um, like the kid was actually killing it in Seattle. That's what I was like. I remember because they were talking about the Mariners in the playoffs, the White Sox. I was like, whoa! And that's when like Griffey's like cards were hot as hell. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a million things I could bring up about '94. There could, there's a million different stories that happened during '94 that could base that I could sit there and list and go on and on and on and on about. But the bottom line is, I don't care about what the play, what happened to the players. I don't care about what happens with the owners. The bottom line, the the only entity that was fucked that entire '94 season wasn't the owners. What the players is the fans that pay their hard-earned money day in, day out to watch these guys play a kid's game. Those are the people that are continuously fucked. So what they're doing by doing it this year, by now they want, oh, we want this, we want this, we want this. Guess what? Why don't you just ask for the fucking world on a platter then? Why don't you ask for a bunch of supermodels to live at your house then? Why don't you ask for a million and one cars in your house? Why not ask to not pay taxes for the rest of your lives? Why ask for, like, say, walk into a store and take anything you want off the shelf? Because they're asking for, I mean, some things they're asking for, I can legit say, oh, you know what? Maybe something like the universal DH stuff, that I can, that's trivial. All that shit is trivial. Bottom line, it's all about this one wants to keep the money. This one wants the money. This one doesn't want to give up the money, so this one's not going to do anything until this one gives up the money. Well, it's the same thing as the. That's N- what the bottom line is. It's the same thing like the. And N- it's thickening. It's the same thing like the NFL. The NFL was the same way, but and they don't. Oh, want to give it! I, I'm just waiting for. I'm just waiting for the NFL to get wind of some of this when the season's over. They're like, well, if baseball went on strike as they complained about, maybe we should too. The NBA are like, oh, you know what? Maybe they are right. Hockey will do the same. It's going to be a trickle down effect. It's going to trickle down because all the other sports are going to get wind of what baseball is doing, and then they're going to want to do the same fucking thing. So everybody's favorite pastimes are going to be fucked in the next couple of years. Mark my words. So enjoy your sports while you have it now, because it's getting to the point where unless these billionaires become billionaires, nobody's going to want to do anything. And that's, my friends, is what I think is sickening. Football, hockey, basketball, baseball, collegiate, you know, uh, Olympics. It's all about the almighty dollar. When did, uh, when, I remember when sports used to be uh, a sporting event to see who was better, not who had the bigger fucking wallet. Well, that's what you get when you. But now it seems to be like, well, uh, so and so's got a bigger sneaker endorsement than me. I want more money than his sneaker endorsement. Welcome to the age of multimedia. So, so that's I'm not I'm gonna I'm not, that's I'm done with this. Baseball can go fuck itself until it un, uh, can fuck itself in my eyes until it unfucks itself. All right. And I won't fucking say another fucking word about baseball until this shit gets worked out. So how about them Jets? <laughs> they just signed a new DN. Damn, Ryan. <laughs> Actually, no. Ryan, you're lucky. I love you like a brother because I wouldn't want to say what I'm thinking right now. So, yeah. Oh, go right ahead. I deserve it. That was an asshole move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How how did you? So uh, so how did your car? How did your Steelers do? Better than the Eagles? <laughs> hey, 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 in retrospect, you both did better than the Giants. 
That's true. We all, we both did better than the Giants. <laughs> and, so, yeah. and so did the Jets. <laughs> hey, we did better than the Patriots. That's true, too. Oh, man, that was embarrassing. So, all right, so hold on. So other news, and we were saying this before, Chris, you're going to laugh your ass off at this. Remember how I said the CDC is kind of finagling the rules to make their own rules? Oh, yeah. So the NHL came out and reported that oh. they are not going to cancel the season. Because 75, the NHL has herd immunity. I wish I was fucking joking about saying that. 75% <laughs> of the roster of the entire NHL had COVID within the last six months. Fucking Christ. <laughs> and the owners of the NHL came out and said, no, fuck you, we're playing. Science, boys. Yeah, Science. They, they literally came out and goes, the CDC goes to him and goes, well, you all have COVID, maybe you should postpone the season. He goes, we had 75% of our guys get it. We're just going to take a two-week a two week break and come back and finish the season. <laughs> No wonder, no wonder why Gritty has had the face shield and the face mask again. <laughs> but, dude, in my opinion, the biggest snafu out of all this with the CDC is what they just said about college sports. They turned around and said to the colleges, to the NCAA organization, by the way, just to clarify, it is January 19th. We are, I would say, three months away from March Madness. So just remember that when I say this. Apparently, if you play college basketball, men or women, and you have COVID, you are considered now fully vaccinated. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, say that again? Oh, I will say... I, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Hold on. I will say this. The CDC came out and said, if you had COVID, you are now considered fully vaccinated. Did they like, fucking say this shit a year ago? <laughs> what? Yeah. That makes sense. And guess what? The spikes that's using with the vaccine are already in your body. Well, here's the Overproducing thing. Overproducing causes more damage. Here's the thing. So you're vaccinated. Here's the thing. How far are we away from March Madness, like I just said? Fuck Christ. Yep. That is that dumb as shit because there's so many damn variants, so you're not. According, uh, according to the CDC, you are. That's why I was saying. You are going to lose your shit when I tell you that the CDC is finagling rules. I would like to weigh in, and that's because the Omicron variant is the dominant variant worldwide. Oh yeah, hey, you're vaccinated. You're, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the va- You got COVID. You're fully vaccinated now. Congratulations. Yeah, here's a here's a fucking cookie. Go play in March Madness. Hey, you know what's really funny about this is this is all happening just a couple days after Bill Gates fucking went on Twitter and was like, "Post Omicron, life can go back to normal because this is the dominant variant and it's already down. It's just a basic form of the flu, and we're gonna have shots for it next year." Be very, very quiet. I am hunting Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, all right. All right. So, basically, if you're vaccinated and have COVID, no, no I guess no. You're, just, you're basically a superhero, Chris. Yeah, yeah. You're you're Hancock. You're Hancock. You're Will Smith and Hancock. <laughs> Fuck yes! I need a bottle of bourbon. <laughs> Dude. Uh, when do I get flight? Yeah. In all honesty, that is honest to God the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard from the CDC. Yeah, because it's good because I googled it and it's like vaccinated people with prior COVID infection have stronger protection during Delta. CDC study finds. Yeah, I'm saying that. Well, that's Delta, but I'm saying is now they said like I want to say this was about uh, two weeks ago they came out. I could be wrong, but they came out and said this, and I'm just like, what the fuck. All right, Kyrie, you can go play in New York now. Congratulations. <laughs> like, don't... No fucking sense. 
No, they're saying it because guess what? Now they can make money. Now colleges can make money again because it's March fucking madness. Right. They've already made the money off COVID. Now we can make money off other stuff for a little bit. That's that's so, the thing that makes no sense. Yeah, you're saying it makes no sense. It doesn't because it's it's all a money grab with college basketball. Makes so of course after March Madness is over, back. Well, well, sorry, we were wrong. No, after March Madness is going to be April, so everything you uh, open up but back, open up back again because it's going to get warmer. Mm-hmm. Tell me I'm wrong about that one. You know I'm not. Because <laughs> that's Daytona. After that, we get towards Daytona and towards NASCAR. <laughs> Every all outdoor activities are going to be opened up again. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Hey. The CDC is like, screw you guys, I'm going home. Oh, Jesus Christ. At this point, the guys at the CDC are just fucking drunk and they're like, fuck it, I don't know. You're good. You're not. You are. It's okay. We don't know. Wait, is this cocaine here? <sighs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I can't believe this shit. This this is going to be fun. Yeah, let's sit back and enjoy this shit. This place, Las Vegas thinks the Washington Wizards were a better team than the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, I'll take I'll take even money on that all day. Thank you. Anyway, so all right. So let's get into some football. While we wait on Christian, we'll talk about this. So Bruce Arians got fined. What did he get fined for? Smacking a player on the helmet. Okay. Brian, did you hear about this? No, I did not. John, did you hear about this at all or no? Nope. Oh, look at this. CM Punk's going to go over somebody else tonight. Who is it? Sean Spears. Got it. Don't care. Uh, So Arians got fined 50K for smacking a player over the helmet. It was Adams from his own fucking team. Unnecessary roughness on the sidelines. The coach. Look, all I'm saying is at least it wasn't with the whistle. That shit rings. Yeah. But he got... How the fuck do you get fined for slapping one of your players on the helmet? Great fucking question. Like, that that's always been, like, you guys play it. I'm sure you remember it. Big play, what's everybody doing? Slapping your shoulder pads, slapping your helmet. Yeah, he... So, even though he it was like a slap, he kind of did a thrust slap. <laughs> if that makes sense, like he he did like, like he almost, palm forward. He almost did a palm shot to his helmet. Different was it was caught on camera. Yeah. <laughs> no. What else. the fuck was that? That was quick. I'm an AEW to help put over the younger talent that was with a, a f- fucking second win. That was a perfect 10. Was it a perfect 10? It was a perfect 10. That's <laughs> it was a guess. perfect. It was a perfect 10 second match. <clears throat> that, that's ridiculous. Uh, other news. Uh, Bruce Arians. Uh, not Bruce. Sorry. I said Bruce Arians. Tennessee passed Henry on his final test. So it looks like he will be starting. Against the Bengals. Who? Derrick Henry. Oh, shit. He passed physical contact in practice today, so. He's returning to end men's careers in the playoffs. He hasn't had a good playoff career to begin with, so why start now? 
I don't get it. How is this guy? Ca- how this guy cannot stay healthy? What Derrick Henry? Yeah, Derrick Henry. Uh, how he? How can he not? How he cannot stay healthy? It's pretty simple. I mean, when you're bashing your body into other people's bodies, but it's not. Where in- <laughs> but here's the thing: his injuries are lower extremity. It's not his upper body. It's not like he gets a broken. It's a foot. It's a knee. It's a it's a quad. It's an N- It's a, a PCL. It's an MCL. Well, when you run over a guy, eventually your knee does hit his helmet. But on the way down, I mean, how many times, I, I, how many times did you see Brandon Jacobs completely run over a guy and then all of a sudden his knee hit the guy's helmet? Right, but I'm saying is though is but what I'm saying is though is this one came off a broken foot. It wasn't like it was a tear where he's at. No, it was a broken foot. Like it, his stuff is bone breaking. It's bones breaks. It's not like it's not like a, a torn it's not like a torn muscle or something like that where it's it's not it's like almost non contact injuries that he's getting foot problems can happen to almost anybody i mean you just step the wrong way or you um shift your weight the wrong way all of a sudden you're asking for problems oh yeah but i'm saying, i mean but no what i'm saying is yeah. though is it seems like it's a consistent thing for him wait what it seems like it's a consistent thing for derrick henry I mean, Derrick Henry, I mean, like, again, like, if you're running and all that, you shift your weight just the wrong way, you can break your foot. It's the same way how, like, if you shift your weight the wrong way, if you're, if you're like, putting your weight on your hands, you could break a finger. Or fuck with your palm or something like that. I mean, it happens. Right. Well, here's my question, then. When was the last time he played a full season? Three years ago? Four years ago? Doesn't matter, because when he plays, he produces. He didn't produce last year when he came back. And that was for the playoffs. Well, when you're... Well, the, that was why the, also the Titans brought back they, that's why they got Julio Jones and shit like that because they needed something to go with them. Julio didn't, is not healthy either. Julio's out for this game. And hello, Christian. They're hello, running, friends. Too. And they have other running backs too. I mean, I mean the thing is, when Derrick Henry's healthy, he's the best running back in the league. Oh, agree. Bar none. Question is though, is when can he stay healthy? Uh, Christian, just to get you a heads up on this, we are talking about Derrick Henry uh, completing contact, and it looks like he's going to be cleared to play against Cincinnati. Yeah, I mean, this is why they they fought so hard for the one seed. I'll admit, it was tough for them to stay afloat during the regular season because there were just some Sundays when they didn't show up during the regular season. You see what I'm saying? Like, Honestly, the best game that I think they played without Derrick Henry was the one that they uh, beat the Rams in. That Sunday night game in Los Angeles. You know how tough it is to win on the West Coast, right? That's a long road trip. And, I mean, they did it with defense, and they did it with Tannehill taking care of the football. Then after that, things just kind of seem to spiral out of control. You look at how they were able to beat the Saints. They did it with defense. And then they get upset by the Titans. They lose to the Patriots. So it looks like they lost a little bit of ground. But I think the game that saved this season was the one against the 49ers. Right. Uh, maybe you know. When was the last time Derrick Henry played a full season? Uh, I think it was last year. No, he was out last year. He was out last year for a little bit. He didn't come back till the playoffs. Was he? Yeah. I thought he played all. Oh, hold on, let me see. I'm gonna look this I, up. I don't think he did. He didn't have. Let me see. He he didn't, because... If he did, he didn't have a breakout year because he, he. 
He didn't have. A he rushed for two thousand yards last year. He, I swear to God, he was out with some with a lower extremity. Let me see here. I'm about to look it up right now. Professional career. That's a big ass man. Jesus Christ. Okay. He's six three, two forty seven. God damn. And you know what's funny? The other day, someone tried to tell me he's a modern day Brandon Jacobs. Absolutely not. He's way faster and he's way stronger than somebody had the nerve to tell me he's a modern day Jerome Bettis. Not at all. He's way faster and way stronger. Stronger. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm about to look. Um, career statistics. Nah, he played all 16 games last year. Oh. Yeah. And he played all 16 games in 2017, but he wasn't a starter. He only started two games. Yeah, he played all 16 in 2020. He ran for 2,000 yards. You're not getting 2,000 if you take a week off. Well, he almost did play in eight games this year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in eight games this year, he still finished in eighth. In rushing yards with nine hundred and thirty-seven, that's crazy. <laughs> that's incredible. If he only played eight games and he's still in the top ten in rushing yards, oh. yeah. Because I remember that final game last year against Houston. They said he needed two hundred and twenty-three yards to to get two thousand, and he ran for two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> that's a grown ass man. Yeah, this year yeah. this year in eight games he ran for nine hundred and thirty seven yards. Yeah, and at one point, you remember during the regular season, I was calling him my MVP, remember? Oh, he was on MVP. Remember? He was on MVP pace. Yeah, he was. And then unfortunately he got hurt and I was excited that he was on MVP pace because it's been going to quarterbacks every year since except two thousand and twelve. That's the last time a non-quarterback won it, and that was, um, um, what's it called, when Adrian Peterson won it. Yeah, uh, this is terrifying. So I got his stats up right here. He was, in eight games, he's still ninth overall in rushing and sixth in touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember back in the day, remember back in the day, like in the 80s and 90s, like the Emmett Smith days when being a 1,000-yard rusher was something? Mm-hmm. Think about that. You near one thousand yards in eight games. Right. Well, uh, at the same time, too, when your offense is surrounded around him, oh, uh, you know what I'm thinking? Henry had a lower body injury, and but he played through it. Yeah, that's probably what it was for nineteen and but- twenty. He he may have played, but he was never like. He he can never stay fully healthy. I mean, you're not wrong about that, right. but he played all 16. Yeah. All right. Thing I'm saying, back in the 80s and 90s, when teams were run heavy, and still being a 1,000 yard rusher was a thing. Hmm. I mean, the Giants were run heavy. I mean, hell, Phil Simms never threw 20 passes a game. You kidding me? That was you were yeah that was a bad game if he did that. I mean the Washington potatoes. There we go. Um, they ran heavy. The Cowboys were a run heavy team. Like the only team that wasn't run heavy back then in the East anyway was Philadelphia. Right. But like a ton of teams were run heavy and. To basically boast a 1,000 yard rusher was something. Mm-hmm. Now, days yeah, you'll a 1,000 yard rusher, like, eh, okay, whatever. Well, because you're getting. Actually, it's impressive was... if you get a 1,000 yard rusher. If, because the quarterback's throwing 45, <coughs> passing 45 times a game. Yeah, but, but the thing is, back then, a 1,000 yard rusher was like an automatic ticket to the Pro Bowl. Now it's like, yeah, now if you're a 1,000-yard rush, you're really almost your trade bait. Oh, God, here comes the excuses. So news is just coming in. Zeke was playing with a partially torn PCL. Wow. 
Oh, Bob, boo hoo. Like I said, here comes the boot. Here comes the bullshit. Dallas Cowboys excuses. The thing is, it was so nice to see them lose and be like, and not have fans go, you know, we're going to Super Bowl next year. It was so nice. They actually were shocked. Like, man, we're go- we lost. We need to do something. Like, not like the same typical cowboy fan hubris. It was beautiful to see that. No, that's the Raiders. The Raiders? The Raiders were bitching. Really? The Raiders? Yeah, the Raiders. After they bitched and moaned about, you know, the fake whistle, (laughs) the, uh, oh, what was the other thing? Oh, shit. Losing the... Well controversial call so they do have a legitimate gripe you stop playing unless I saw a referee's hands blowing around or moving <coughs> around I ain't stopping because <coughs> the play as much as everyone says play through the whistle you also play till the referee fucking stops the play yeah I mean, the, like I said, it was a controversial call. They have a gripe, but is it a right gripe? No, it's still a gripe. They're going to be bitching like this, like they've been bitching about the tuck rule for 20 years. But the thing is, if you're really bitching, you should bitch why Derek Carr threw that ball in the double coverage. Well, apparently that's another thing they're bitching about, because apparently there's photos of him getting hooked. The receiver and I call bullshit. You threw that and it got picked. Piss off. I mean, he threw that ball in double coverage. I don't hooked or not. You threw the ball in the double coverage. It doesn't matter if you got hooked or not. You threw the ball into double coverage. Ryan, what about you? Did you watch any of the football games? And John, same with you. Did you watch any of the playoff games? What's up, John? Yeah, hey, I, I did. Um, What's up, man? What's up, buddy? Uh, so while I was at work, I watched a little bit of the the uh, Bucks Eagles game, and I watched Steelers and Chiefs. Of course you did. Of course I did. John, look, every, everything was good until you know, like offensive mistakes were made, yeah. defensive mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. John, did you watch any of the games or no? Nope. Nope. Uh, I mean, shit. There was... I mean, honest to God, we can go over these because there's not a really a lot of news. But, yeah, so the Raiders game, Bengals beat the Raiders 19-26. to The big thing was Carr was... Making big mistakes late in the game. Um, yeah, I'll meet you halfway with that, but I kept feeling Carr wanted to turn the game into a shootout. And remember what I said before the game? They couldn't do that. Slow the game down, run the football. Should have been running the ball more when Larry Ogan Joby went down. He's the Raiders' best run, uh, Bengals' best run stopper. So, just questionable play calling all around. And I felt he kept trying to force the ball to Darren Waller and um and Hunter Renfro. Like the Raiders, like they started like doing something, and then I was I saw that. I'm like, all right, well, they're actually running the ball, they're keeping it away. Now they gotta score a touchdown. And they scored a field goal. And then since then, he came right back and scored a touchdown. And then it was that stupid turnover. And when the, you're trying to keep Joe Burrow off the field and he's playing the majority of the first half, that's not a good sign. So, so I got a fun story for you right now. So I, I'm at the I'm at the ticket window, and the guy goes to me, goes to me, and goes, "I think the uh, the." Titans are going to win the Super Bowl. If I bet on it, like, how, like, how do I bet this? And I'm like, all right, so I got to teach. I'm going to instruct somebody on betting. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, you do know you're playing Cincinnati, right? Like, I get Derrick Henry's back, but you knew you are playing Cincinnati, right? That can definitely beat you. 
And I'm just like, all right, you want to waste your money? Here's how you do it. Because I don't buy Tennessee making it to the Super Bowl this year. Um, I mean, well, I'll save my thoughts for. Uh, we'll get. We'll get to we them. Get, well, we get to it. Yep. Uh, all right. Other than this and the 49ers game, oh my God, these games sucked this year. This this playoffs, this wild card round. Yeah, yeah. I actually have an interesting thought about Tampa Bay. I'll just come out and say it right now. Yeah. Philly lost that game more than Tampa Bay won it. I agree with that. Because, yeah. Yeah, look, Tampa Bay, they pretty much gave Philly every chance. To, to, to get back into that game. And the Eagles just couldn't capitalize. Let's be real. When Tristan Wirfs went down, Philly was doing what? They were rushing four, right? Sometimes they were even getting after Tom Brady with three and bringing pressure up the middle. Remember what I always say, bring that pressure up the middle, make him move, and your secondary has to be on its A game. Um, then it was what, what angered me about the Eagles was the fact that they did not get Devontae Smith the ball. You're getting the ball to everybody else, but you're not getting it to probably your most explosive weapon on the perimeter in space. You could have used him in a variety of different ways. See, here's my thing. That's the thing about football. If a defense zooms in and takes away what your one guy likes to do best, find other ways to get him the ball. You could have used him out the backfield. You could have used him on screen passes. Just something for him to get some touches. You see where I'm going with this? All right. Um, all right. Can I chime in here since it's my squad? Yeah. All right. Um, first off, with the defense, um, uh, the DC Campbell needs to go. He played this conservative bullshit scheme. Like it, it was. I don't know who told him sit back and let and what, let Brady pick you apart. I mean, no, you get pressure on Brady. Everybody, my God, everybody knows that. No, they never blitzed. They never blitzed at all. It was like, ah, oh, let's sit back with our secondary that needs help. Because after Sia Nelson, you have guys that need help. I mean, Anthony Harris is good, but he's not that good. All right, I'm going to stop you right there. They couldn't blitz, Chris. You can blitzing Brady is the worst thing you can do. If you, because look, the guy's been in the league what, 22 years now, right? He's seen every blitz, he's seen every coverage. You have to disguise coverage against him when you play him. You have to confuse him. And Philly did a pretty good job uh, of collapsing his pocket and forcing him to get rid of the ball sooner rather than later. Yeah, um, that's blitzing them, and it worked in 2017 when they beat them in the Super Bowl. Yeah, um, because they had better because they had a better philosophy then. You had more of an experienced defense at that time. I mean, you had guy. I mean, you had basically almost the same guys. I'm pretty sure. Bar, yeah, Barnett was there when they won the Super Bowl. Um, you had a better linebacking core now than you did back then because the linebacking core was awful. Uh, last time. I mean, secondary, yeah, the secondary, I don't think the secondary was as good now as it was back then, but you had almost the same defensive line. You had that, but you, I mean, you have to get pressure on Brady some way. You have to move him away from his perch. Absolutely. He'll pick you apart. And yeah, that's I'm what. Making, look, I'm making and, him run. So, and also, all right, on the offensive side of the ball, I, I know I know he's your number one running back, but it's time to get rid of Miles Sanders. It is time to get rid of Miles Sanders. I mean, because I've always said this for the longest time. Like Walter Payton and Barry Sanders were great running backs. But if I'm teaching a kid how to play running back, I'm not showing them that. Because they'll, they'll try to dance out through – They'll try to dance around holes all over the place. No, I'd show him like Emmett Smith, where he hits the hole, goes fast, because that's what I want. And when Jordan Howard and Boston Scott had the ball, what were they doing? Hitting the hole, and you were getting 10 yards plus, you know, you were getting your first downs. 
with Miles Sanders, he dances around all over the place. He, he runs like 15 yards to get two. It makes no sense, and it was a wasted down. So then you have, you're trying – Jalen Hurts is trying to get the ball to Devontae or whoever. I mean, another one. You got to cut Chris Watkins or trade him or whatever because he is supposed to be the fly route guy, like Deshaun Jackson. And and the biggest knock that most critics have said, Jalen Hurts can't make the throws. He doesn't have the arm strength. He threw Watkins open several times, but Watkins could get on his horse when he's the speedster to catch the goddamn ball. And he can't run a route to save his life. He can't. He cannot. That's one thing I will give Jalen Rager over Devon, over. Um, Quez Watkins is Rager can actually run a fucking route. I mean, he can't catch a punt to save his life, but he can run a route. But I mean, it comes down to I would say if I'm the Eagles in the offseason, I would put Derek Barnett, Quez Watkins, Miles Sanders, Jalen Rager, and Andre on the fucking trading block. And the only second chance I would really give, I would give Raker a second chance to see how it is in the preseason, and maybe if you could convert Andre Dillard to a center, maybe. But other than that, it's time to go get rid of him and get rid of Chapman. He sucks. His his like his conservative game plan to take on Brady and Bucks was just ugh. It sucked. Well, it didn't. That's help. Why it legitly did not help the minute the first freaking series of the game. Up, oh, hit a hit Brady low. Well, there, here we go. Mhm. I mean, that's the thing. You let Brady sit back there with no pressure. He's gonna pick you apart. Everybody knows this. I know you got to disguise coverage, but sometimes you just got to come after him with a blitz and get in his face. That's the worst thing you can do. I'm telling you, look, 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 the best way to beat him is to sit guys in the box like you're showing blitz, drop those guys back, take away the middle of the field. I'm cool with him throwing the ball outside the numbers because where does Brady like to primarily throw? In the flat and over the middle, right? I've been watching him forever. So you rush four, you keep a spy in the middle of the field, and then you keep you drop two guys back and let everybody else play coverage. You beat him. Like look at how the Saints did it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry to say, but that game plan did not work because we did rush four and drop the two linebackers back, and he killed us. But you, you got your secondary. Then. Gotta make him run. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. How did they beat? How did the Eagles, Giants, both times beat Brady in the Super Bowl? And they did the it with well, the Giants. Twice. Giants were able to do it with a consistent rush. They rushed they, four. Exactly, and they got they rushed home. four, and they, they got home. home. You gotta get yeah, home. They got home. We rushed corners. We had a safety blitz. We 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 disguised our blitz, but we did blitz. But you we never, didn't. But you never got up. home. But you never got home on Brady. And the Super Bowl we did. Yeah, in the Super but Bowl. But that's the difference. That was what we're trying yeah, to say. This game, you did not get home on shit. Brady. Yeah, we didn't blitz shit. Avante Maddox didn't come up. Nelson never came up. Harris never came up. Slay damn sure never came up. We never even blitzed a linebacker. The only time Alex. Singleton was in the backfield, was when he gave it on a draw. Okay, here's, here's the thing. If four ain't getting there, if you don't get there or five or six, Gronk and Evans are going to take you to fucking school. Yeah. That game is and going to, that game, if you didn't get home with the front, with that four, even if you got tried to get home with the with two other linebackers, that game was going to be 15 to 60. Maybe, but if you get them, you have to get in his face. I mean, if you don't hit him, you have to get in his face and, and you know, impair his vision somehow. 
Look, the best way I say you know you beat Brady is when his jersey is dirty and he's throwing shit on on the sidelines. Like what he did against the Saints. You saw how he went to town on that on that tablet. Because the Saints got home. The Saints got home consistently. Mm Mm-hmm. And in the second half, when we actually started doing something, we got home. And that was like with it, Hargraves, all that, because like they actually started making a push up the middle. I think that was probably because Tampa's offense was tired, but who knows? Ryan, what, Ryan what's your opinion on that? What's your opinion on that game? Um, I called it. <laughs> And it's, it's 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 not that uh, I didn't have faith in the Eagles because I mean they are a pretty recent Super Bowl winner, but you, you kind of don't go against Tom Brady in the postseason. And if you do, you get you, like I said, the Giants. And like I'm I'm not a Tom Brady fan by any means, but I will give that dude respect because he is a pretty fucking amazing quarterback who somehow manages to look younger while getting older. It's Just those, like me. It's those stem cells. Just like me. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> See what happens when you drink your I mean, water? <laughs> I said yeah, I said last week it's going to be a tough game, but of course I wasn't going to go against my team. If it was any other team, I would have picked Brady. Like, oh. no doubt. But I'm not going to go against my squad. I'm not. Well, let's get to the other games. Because, uh, like I said, it's kind of been a short week on the news. The big news was the fucking Joker stuff, and we spent, like, 40 minutes talking about that. Uh, the Patriots, uh, the, Belich- <laughs> the Belichick since system came in drunk as shit and was too hopped up on that Blackberry brandy because, holy shit, did the Bills smoke them in minus six-degree weather. Look, that's the best performance I think I've seen from the Bills with Josh Allen ever. Allen, yes. I'll give you his stats right now. Allen, 21 for 25 for 308 yards and fucking five or six touchdowns. Five. five. He threw five. That's, that's insane on a Belichick defense. Remember but, what I said? Then, I remember when we were talking about the Patriots and Bills game um, when they played in Foxborough during the regular season. After Buffalo won that game, what did I say to you, Ronnie? Oh, that Belichick. Buffalo had them figured out. No, yeah. Buffalo had them figured out. Plain and simple. And they just went in here with a with a physical well, – it was just a physical attack all around. The offensive line was playing downhill. They beat up the Patriots' defensive front all game long. They gave Josh Allen time to throw. And when you play man coverage, what's that mean? Man to man. You have to account for everybody who can make a play on the football And it seemed like every time Josh Allen was scrambling, the Patriots had their backs turned. Think about it. They were running the football defensively. They showed why they were the number one ranked defense in the league. Um, Yeah, this is a Buffalo team that's playing with a with a chip on their shoulder. Like I I really like it. Um, New England. I'm gonna tell you if. Wide receiver isn't the first thing on New England's wish list this year. Because I don't know if you guys knew this. New England didn't have a receiver this year that eclipsed 100 yards receiving. Really? That's the weak point of their team right now. Yeah, Kendrick Bourne, it was an okay signing. But see, here's the thing. The Patriots, they don't have guys now who put fear into a secondary. I can name five teams right now. With, with, with wide receivers who put fear into defenses. The Packers, Devontae Adams. Buffalo, Stephon Diggs. Um, Tampa, Mike Evans, when he's healthy. Um, hell, who's another one? Help hell, God, anybody. God, hell, um, I mean, he's still got to get more. Like, shit, I think the Jets have a... The Jets in... Um, oh, God, the kid out of fucking Auburn. Uh, from Mississippi Ooh. State. The kid out of Mississippi State. They just drafted him. Oh, shit. He can be. He's gonna be dangerous. This, um, God damn it. Okay. He, he's someone that's been putting fear in everybody because he was going. He was going off 
for a team that was sucking, he was going on. Oh, he was having a fucking good rookie year. Yeah, but you see, but you see the point that I'm making. Like New England doesn't have that guy, and that's what New England needs to target. Whether it's Drake London at a USC or depending on if he's healed at this time, John Mechie the third. I think that'd be the perfect move for them because he has chemistry with Mac Jones. You see, a lot of other teams did it. Miami got Tua, Jalen Waddle, and Cincinnati got Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. Yeah, uh, Eli Moore. Or Elijah okay. Moore. Elijah Moore. All right. Um, that's, that's who I was thinking of. Uh, Moore? Yeah, Moore. Okay. That was one of the few games this season where Mac Jones looked like a rookie. He's looked like a rookie ever since that Colts game. Yeah. Well, what, I know he's quiet right now. Ryan, what is your – Ryan John, chime in. Got anything? Nope. No? All right, let's go to the next game. The Niners beat the Cowgirls. The only road win of the playoffs so far. Um. Okay, can we just say straight up first off, can we stop with the damn wild card games on Nickelodeon? Holy Christ! They want to bring in the. They want to bring in children. But they're not. To, yeah, to you, they might not they're be. Not. But, dude, to you, it's not for your demographic. My ten-year-old, it's for him. Or my six, my, it's for so, someone's six-year-old. If they don't want to watch the game, maybe they. Watch it for something else, but they learn the fucking game. It's not that the commentary is not meant for us. I'll tell you that right now. All right, certain things, certain things with the animations. All right, the slime zone, whatever. The big first down monster. I'm like, really? This makes no sense. Again, Uh, not for us. But my issue was the pregame. Holy shit! The pregame. Ugh. Derek Carr. They show Derek Carr and they put a damn big pirate hat on him. Like the dumbest looking, like phony, like animated pirate hat. And I swear to God, I, I wasn't listening to it, but I I imagine they probably had it. And Derek Carr, argh, ugh, fucking Christ. Again. Th- that- it's them making fun of it's them having fun and if you're saying Derek Carr, well Derek Carr is a Raider and Raider were Viking or not Vikings, Raiders are pirates, so they did a pirate hat. Whoa, it's not for us. But Tom Brady's a buck. Why not throw the big dumb captain hat on him too? Again, it, they put a goat head on him. They've done that before. Mm-hmm. It's it was did, did did you did you watch the game on Nickelodeon, Chris? I watched part of it because Ronnie was like, "Remember the wild card game was on Nickelodeon," and I thought, "Oh, it's only on Nickelodeon." And then I couldn't take anymore. I wish it and I only was. At, I wish it only was. Thank fucking God, it was on CBS. Thank fucking God. And that's when I tweeted at Christian. Because Christian's like, man, I can't take any more of this shit. I was like, and I was like, it's on CBS. It's on CBS. But again, you're talking about something that they're promoting it to a younger audience. So they're trying to do it. And also it's on Nick of freaking Lodian. Honestly, I, tr- I give them props for just trying something. The thing is, I gave them props last year because the Bears Saints, like they did enough to be engaging, but it wasn't crazy over the top where I wanted to shoot myself. This was getting crazy over the top where I wanted to shoot myself. (laughs) I mean, it's like little things you can do. I get it. Like, you know, the field goal thing, or I have, you know, SpongeBob's face or whatever. Fine. There are a couple animations like the first down line with the slime. I'm good with that. 
But then they start doing the shit during the pregame. I didn't see last year's pregame, so I don't know if it was that bad. But <laughs> this was like, I remember I was talking to Christian. I'm like, five minutes in, I'm like, I can't watch this anymore. And he even goes, he's like, oh, man. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. Why don't you chime in on it, Christian? Man, don't nobody care. Thank you. Dude, look, it's for kids. Like, it's a whole... They're not they're not catering it to our demographic. You see what I'm saying? So of course they're gonna make it corny and they're gonna make it kind of silly because kids enjoy shit like that. Yeah, what I was mad is that Ronnie said it's on Nick and didn't mention CBS. That's what I was angry about. Hey, Chris, figure this out. Nickelodeon's run by uh, let me guess. Oh yes, yeah, CBS. Yeah, they're, they're a part of the same sister company. You don't think it's not going to be on the national fucking... It's not going to be on a national fucking thing? It's the playoffs! Well, the it's thing the is... Table. But the thing is, we've, we're also in the era now where, you know, the NFL had a game in England that was exclusively on Hulu. Okay, or YouTube. and it's on Amazon. 95 But here's the thing. About 85% of people have Amazon Prime. And now end up having a Twitch account. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, though, uh, when you're like, oh, yeah, it's on Nick. I'm like, <laughs> Thank you, Scrocky. What? Thank you, Scrocky. What? Yeah, saying fuck on Nickelodeon's the real for, is really for children. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I thought, like, and I'm thinking, okay, it's on Nickelodeon. I guess the NFL wildcard game, this one's exclusively on Nickelodeon. Okay, whatever. And then I was like, oh, my God, if I have to watch any more of this, I'm going to want to fucking shoot myself. And then I looked on ESPN, and that's when I found out it was on CBS. I was like, oh, thank God. Again, That's it. I feel to kids. Or they're trying to make it appeal to kids. But I don't know. I think, I mean, it was best you five. Because the 10-year-old, 9-year-old kid's already made up his mind. Dude, you'd be surprised nowadays. They still cater to like 9, 10-year-olds. But I'm saying that like 9, 10-year-olds usually made up their mind already. Oh, oh, boo-hoo. I know people that are in their 30s that still fucking watch Nickelodeon. They might be high out of their fucking mind and watching Spongebob, but they're 30 years old. Uh, (laughs) I'm not saying... No, I'm saying usually when you're 9 or 10, you've already made up your mind whether you're watching football or not. Yeah, and, and you don't think any stoner turned on Nickelodeon to watch the pretty colors? Yeah, and if you it's, it's weed, not psychedelics. <laughs> and hey, what I'm saying depends on what it's laced with. <laughs> also, I'm saying if a kid's watching football, he chances are he's watching it with his parents, like his father. <clears throat> and dad's gonna see that and be like, oh hell no. And I know so many parents that fucking watch Nickelodeon when I was a fucking kid, and there was shit like Ren and Stimpy on. It's real oh, whole it's real shit. kid. It's real kid wholesome still nowadays. No, it isn't. No, it's not. <laughs> no, I'm saying Nickelodeon used to be the shit back then with Double Dare and shit. It's still dirty as shit when SpongeBob on television is calling Mrs. Puff a cunt and telling Gary not <laughs> to drop the soap. <laughs> it's still fucked up. Sandy Cheeks, Mr. Krabs, Bikini Bottom. Yeah, it's a pretty fucked up show. That the secret sauce in Krabby Patty is crab because the Krusty Krab is a crab cage. Squidward's nose is a giant dong. P- uh, SpongeBob plays the skin flute at the beginning of the show. Oh yeah. SpongeBob's nose is an erect dong. <laughs> Appar- so apparently, uh, not only are the Niners and the Cowboys rivals, but apparent, I guess, the Krusty Krab is rivals with soap. <laughs> Uh, you gotta blame- hey, hey, as an Eagles fan, you better take offense to fucking Cowboys fans for stealing your shit because they were about to start throwing batteries after they lost that game. 
I, I, I was wondering how they were going to cover that up on Nickelodeon. <laughs> they didn't. Yeah, there were a couple places like um, I don't think they're ever going to do a football game at on Nickelodeon. One of them being Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, Eagle, fi- uh, not Eagle fans. Cowboy fans started throwing debris at the refs because you know it was sponsored by Duracell. Fly, fly, fly batteries, fly. Yeah, they're throwing snozberries at the refs. <laughs> oh my! What, what the fuck was in that weed? Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm wondering how 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 they cover that up. Look, they're throwing little tiny flowers at the. They're not. They're just gonna be royal assholes to people. Like you know, you, you, like you do, ladies and gentlemen. Do not be a dick to the referees. Be a dick to everyone. Don't discriminate. Be a dick to everybody. That's right. Uh, but the game. Oh my god! Did did. Did uh, Frisco run over Dallas? Well, like we called it. We knew that was going to happen. Yeah. We said. <laughs> my, uh, my one friend, when he saw me, my one, yeah, so you guys will get a laugh out of this. My one friend did a, like a ranking of all the quarterbacks, right, of guys like he trusts in the playoffs. Of course, Brady was one. He had... Rodgers at two, Mahomes at three. He had Dak at four, and I had never laughed so hard in all my life. I'm like, Dak? And number four, I'm like, you trust the Cowboys a little too much. Well, I'll so, say this. I had, when I did my ratings last year for quarterbacks, I had Dak at like eight overall. Before he got hurt. Yeah. Before he got hurt. Right. And when I released the preview of the 49ers and Cowboys, he put the little emoji of, um, it's like a notepad, a pencil and notepad, writing it down. So that way, when I was wrong, he let me know about it. What do you think happened? He don't know shit. No, he don't. He don't. I told him. You know, like, I told him. I'm starting him a website, (laughs) don'tknowshit.org. No, 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 no. It's, It's... It's .gov because even the government knows shit, and clearly he doesn't. Nah, he don't. Like, you know, I have, I have, uh. Dot .edu. Uh, I, <laughs> dot, dot .uk because foreigners don't know shit. I have a section in my phone of all the times he hasn't known shit since 2011. It, it, it's bad. Like, it's bad. It, it's it's really bad. Don't know shit .edu, so you actually learn shit. Don't know, oh, no. sh- don't know shit. You, it's a college. Yeah, that you do you. And then he sent me a T-shirt that said, "You don't know shit." He goes, "How many should I buy?" I'm like, seven. One for each hey, day of the week." Hey, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, we need to yep. get Christian that shirt. We need to make it college letters and call it "Don't know shit." You. I got you. <laughs> hey, I would love that. I would love that. Don't know shit. You and on the back, don't know shit. Dot edu. And it can only be bought as a sports jersey. Yes. Yes. Oh, definitely. Hey, Ryan, Ryan, you know what? Since I'm so used to doing it now, we might Give as well up. do the line that one time. One, two, three. You know, I'll say it with you. Stunt cock. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Christian, we will not be hearing Brenda's voice anymore because fuck blog talk radio. Oh, Brenda right. got a man. Uh, Brenda got fired. Brenda got fucking fired. <laughs> oh, Brenda was sleeping with somebody on the job. Yeah. You should have seen it. It was brutal. Ronnie was all like, hey, Brenda, I need you to step into my office. We need to talk. She's like, what's up? And he's like, you're fucking fired. <laughs> Bro, Brenda was taking money from us. Oh, yeah. She was in- yeah, you know what? I want to I wanna commence. I want to do. Yeah, let me find it. Let me find it. Because this this is just too good to pass up. Just way too good. <laughs> no, no, no. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. Blog Talk Radio, you're fired. Oh, God. Uh. Hey, Blog Talk Radio. Oh. Screw you guys. I'm going home.
<laughs> so <laughs> you fired Donald Trump. Oh, yo, Kurt. All right, so you were talking uh, for the quarterbacks you trust, right? Dude, I would trust Garoppolo over Dak because at least Garoppolo, you know, hey, you're going to hand off the football. Yes, he is going to hand off the football. I mean, you can trust that Garoppolo will hand off the football and then hand it off and hand it off and hand it off. I can see it. Oh, God. You, you just made me laugh with that last one, Christian. <laughs> I, heard, I heard the Donald Trump drop. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. He fired Donald Trump? Yeah, he fired Donald Trump. Oh, well. And so did America. Yep. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so let's get to this one before we get to uh, – Ryan's swan song. The Cardinals looked like a pile of dog shit against the Rams. Yeah, that was the best I've seen the Rams look. Uh, I want to say since September. Like, they had a balanced attack. Stafford only threw the football 17 times in that game. They were able to run the football, and that defense was active. When they play like this, they're a tough out. That defense got after Kyler Murray. He really had no time to throw, and that was the worst throw I think I've ever seen a quarterback make. Backed up in his own end zone. You just flip it like that? Throw it out of bounds, at least. Yeah, um, honest to God, this is the this is the Rams that I was expecting to see when they first got OBJ. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, this is exactly the team that I thought we were getting. And this team is scary. They, I think, they have a chance going into uh, green, uh, go uh, going into against Tampa. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about like what caught my eye. Um, I mean, what what's catching my eye about these games? I'm not doing Herb Street with any of them, Ronnie. Just okay. so you know. Can uh, we just? Can we oh, just? Ryan has something to say. Well, hold on. Uh, Ryan will have something to say. Trust me on that. Uh, Scrocky in the chat has something to say because he's a fucking Ra uh, Rams fan. But go ahead, Chris. All right. Can we just say that holy shit Arizona was basically the like fortunes of one player all year? It's yeah, like Hopkins. Hopkins was there. They were the best team in the league. All of a sudden, they left and they, they're out. Well, yeah, he's pretty cool because he allows guys – he allows guys to play in their natural positions. Well, I yeah. even, I even said that the one, the Cardinals one, were living in. One player determined the fate of that whole team. That's insane. They were limping into the playoffs, and they just yeah. Yeah, they they were limping into the playoffs since Hopkins went out. Well, no, because they looked normal when they were when they faced Dallas. So the question is, is what which team was showing up? Was it the team against Dallas, or was it, you know, what was limping in? And clearly, it was what was limping in. Well, it also is an indictment of the Cowboys' defense that a team that sold offensively inept without DeAndre Hopkins beat the hell out of him. Ryan, what you got? I didn't watch the Rams Cardinals game. Yeah, we were watching Raw. But all right, final game for the weekend that was the Seattle uh, Seattle uh, Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. The Keeves the the Queefs. Yes, the Queefs. The Chiefs smoked the shit out of the Steelers. Mm. They, they smoked the shit out of them. In the second half, Patrick Mahomes fucking took that game over and romped them. Look, they, they needed to break him down early. They needed to get in his head and stay there. And they almost did it, and then they didn't. This game yeah, I remember that. It was like... I was like, well, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Ooh, that's a dagger. And then I was like, then they threw another one. All right, that dagger might be a nail in a coffin now. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I was I was watching it, and then, you know, they hit that, what, 40, 42 point mark, and I was like, that hurt. That hurt. 
Oh yeah, definitely. I remember that you texted out. Yeah, that hurt. I'm like, yeah, hey. But I, I was physically saying it too. I was like sitting here rocking like that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> like I could feel it in the pit of my stomach. Like I just got kicked in the balls. Oh. And it was a really wide foot because it got both of them. <laughs> I'm, it was hard to like basically you know, like you know, stick a fork in them like how um Collins was basically saying, "No, oh, it's over." I'm like, I don't know about that because one thing, because when you've seen the circle, the wide <laughs> game back in 93, you can never say a game is fully over because it looked like the Bills were going to get blown out by the Oilers and we all know what happened. So that's why I'm like, especially in the playoffs, I'm like, it's not over yet. <laughs> and then like when the Chiefs hit that one, in, like the fourth quarter, I was like, yeah, now it's over. Yeah. So whenever, uh, whenever they forced that fumble and recovered it. Yeah. Yeah. When that like, turnover, it, when that turnover hit, and then they went up. That that scores. that first that first quarter turnover, man. Like we we had that spark of hope. Like the fans got a little more quiet. You could see a little bit of worry in fucking Mahomes' eye. And then, for some reason, for some fucking reason, Tomlin and the offensive coordinator are like. We're going to stick to short passes. We're going to stick to short passes. Why are you going to stick to short passes whenever they fucking figure it out? You're going to stick to short passes. Great fucking Fuck. question. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. They had better luck when he started going mid-range. All right, dude, we get it. Ben's old. He might fucking throw out his shoulder or break a fucking hip. Dude, those late shots were bullshit. Uh, I mean... It's like the classless Kansas City cocksuckers. <laughs> no, it's like the ben second from the begin- Ben from beginning of his career to his end of the career. He never ever got the fucking rough in the passer call. Yeah, no. So rough Ben. Ben like basically just like brushes you off eventually and then throws the ball. Now he got two roughing he got two roughing calls. During that game, what? obvious late hits. They got him on. They got two obvious of them. Obvious late hits, but things that could have been questionable, they never give them. No. Oh yeah, but, one on the freaking knee. And then fucking Patrick Mahomes settled in, and he played like second half Patrick Mahomes because let's be honest, he fucking sucked the first half of the season. Yeah. Who Mahomes did? Yeah. Yeah, well, because think, think about it. A lot of teams. They kind of had the blueprint now on, on how to 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 contain the Chiefs' offense and that. I've been saying it all year, whether it's been on Monday evening quarterback or whether it's been here. I've been saying it all year, keeping safeties deep, playing tight coverage underneath, and making them earn their yards underneath. Now, Mahomes has kind of adapted to what defenses are throwing to him, so he's become a little bit more methodical. He knows. Look, they're gonna take away what I like to do over the top. They're going to take away the seam route with Travis Kelsey, or they're not going to let me get the ball deep down the field to Tyreek Hill. So, you know what? I'm going to take what they give me. And he's doing a lot of thinking and dumping in. He's throwing a ball in the flat as well. So he's really taking advantage of what defenses have been throwing at him. Uh, I'll tell you this. Um, You could take that off, but maybe if Patrick Mahomes would be playing better, if uh, his brother didn't make these stupid TikTok videos and his uh, his baby mama, or I don't know if you know if it's a fiance or wife, needs to shut the fuck up on Twitter. And Instagram, yeah. Because that shit's getting real old real quick, and a lot of people are not happy with it. That just, dude, his brother needs to shut up on fucking TikTok. His brother is, like, causing him more tr- trouble than... Yeah, because Mahomes is a relatively clean guy. Yeah, his brother's not. Yeah. I, I, well, I think that he under, he understands, you know, all those little clauses in, in his NFL contract are going to make him more money in the long run. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, he, he's, he's a smart businessman. I bet you dude's fucking wild outside, though, for real, like, around people he's comfortable with. Yeah, but he's got the Jeter effect. He keeps his mouth, he keeps his fucking nose clean and his mouth shut when he's around, when he's outside. 
Yeah, I just, I just want to know, like, is his dad going to be like, like Joe Flacco's dad? And he's like, my son's really boring. <laughs> no, no, because his dad is a freaking wild man, too. Right. Because his, so. dad, his dad's like the Curs. Or not the Curs, the Curries. <laughs> not quiet. But I mean, there there were definitely some things that that Pittsburgh could have done different. Maybe, you know, giving Ben a little more longevity before he retired. Uh, it was it was sad to see him go. It was bittersweet. Yeah. At the same time, like he's been fucking like pretty consistent quarterback for Pittsburgh. Yeah, he has been. But... And it's it's going to be and it's going to be hard to find somebody to fill that role. Yeah, it definitely is. He's but, leaving. He's leaving some big cleats. He's leaving some big cleats behind. Yeah, my my thing with the Steelers is they never really had a contingency plan after Ben. Like as he was starting no. to get older, they should have drafted a quarterback and developed him. Because let's be real here, um, Mason Rudolph isn't the long term solution for them. They need to go and make a trade for somebody. I know a guy. His name is Deshaun Watson. Hey. Houston's gonna want a lot for him. Okay. I don't think Berg has it. Look, Deshaun is a relatively young guy who is kind of in his prime right now. Why not? Yeah. The weapons are there. He has a running game to lean on, and he has another great he has a defense that he can lean on. He's going from one watt to another watt. Turn down for what? Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's great. Uh, all right, so we ready to get in these picks? I'm I'm having too much fun reading uh, the the cue cards that Sammy Guevara has right now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing. I'm like, huh? <laughs> huh? Huh? All right, cool. No vlog star. Yeah, while his uh. Fine yeah. ass girlfriend or fiance is sitting probably right behind the camera. Oh yeah, I think. I mean, I think Watson. I mean, I seriously think Miami's going to make a play for him. They could say, nah, that. nah, I don't see it. Mm -mm. Hmm. Then why'd they fire Brian Flores? Okay, they said they weren't going after him. Yeah, the uh, the guy actually from, he's um Wolverine. Flat out said he's not going after Harbaugh. He will not. He will never take Harbaugh. So why did they fire Brian Flores if they're because, not going to? Because shop? because he didn't uh, want Tua. He was fighting with the GM the entire time. Because Flores said Tua's our guy. Tua's our guy. Tua's our guy. And there's no, no. We do not. We're not talking about Deshaun Watson. All of a sudden. They get rid of Flores. Is Two it, is not your guy. Is it? Is it really him saying it, or was the <laughs> owners telling him, "Hey, you got to save face. You got to say this." All right. Because that's coach talk. Yeah, that's them saying. That's him saying at the beginning of the year, "Oh, he's our guy. He's our guy." Bullshit. He's not your guy. You would. You wanted Deshaun. You fought for fucking Watson. You wanted fucking, um, oh, God damn it, Herbert. You were fighting for Herbert and took, and took Tua because, oh, yeah, because you had to. He didn't want Tua. He wanted Justin Herbert. And the thing is, if you look back at it now, it would have been a smart move. The GM and the owners wanted Tua. They wanted the name. Yeah, exactly. When Herbert actually has proven to be a lot better already. Yeah, he just needs a better coach. But, all right, let's get into our picks for the week. Four games, uh, Saturday and Sunday, two games apiece. We start at 4.30 on CBS, not Nickelodeon. <laughs> God! The Cincinnati Bengals take on the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee is minus three and a half. The over-under is so, 47. 
So I'm proud of Tennessee. I mean, not Tennessee, of Cincinnati, because I honestly, they truly came out of left field this year. Their, their effort, they, they have so much confidence, right? Like they feel they can score and push the ball up the field on anybody, any defense that they play in the National Football League. So, Ronnie, let me tell you something. The other day, I got a question right before the game. Right. Okay. And the guy asked me, you know, who's one guy that you would compare Joe Burrow to? Want to know who I said? Who? He has the, all right, I had to make sure I really put emphasis on it. He has the mentality of Brady. Like, he feels he can make every pass. He feels he can complete every play, just like Tom did. And all he cares about is winning. You see what I'm saying? Like, he really does have that mindset. But from a like a, a style of play comparison, you know who he really reminds me of? He's the closest thing I've seen to Drew Brees. That's and what fair. I mean by that That's is fair. when I what I mean by that is he can he can make all the throws if you're open, just like Drew did. Joe's getting you the ball. I think, you know, Brees and Burrow have a lot more comparisons than a lot of people actually realize. But nah man, I mean on the perimeter you have Jamar Chase, you have T. Higgins, you have Tyler Boyd in the slot, and then you have C.J. Uzoma. But I think the most important piece to this offense is Joe Mixon. Um, then you look at you look at Cincy's defense; they're going to be without their best run stopper, and Larry Ogunjobi. He, I mean, he's that clog in the middle uh, of the defense. He's their Akeem Hicks, as I like to say. Tennessee, they got the first round by, and they did it without Derrick Henry for a majority of the year. And that's pretty impressive. I think the key for Tennessee in this game, they have to make this game ugly early on. They have to make it as ugly as possible. I see this one being close. I'm actually taking the Bengals in this one. I don't trust Tennessee. I kept telling myself, and I even said it on a phone call the other day for Monday evening quarterback. If I had to trust one of the number one seeds more than the other, it's hands down Green Bay. Because with a straight face, can either you tell me that Derrick Henry, when you take away Derrick Henry, can you trust Ryan Tannehill to drop back in that pocket 35 or 40 times and throw the ball? Without Julio? No. 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 You, even with him, you can't. I say I would have a little take- more faith. I would have a little more faith in him if Julio was there. But not as much. It would be a little bit better than what we have now. Like what you would have now, you don't have Julio. Julio ain't playing. Yeah, but uh, I like Cincinnati in this one. I think I think they the the playoffs start with a road win. So this is funny. I was thinking in my head, like I was honestly thinking about putting Cincinnati go in the in your, in your little tournament thing. Cincinnati going all the way to to the Super Bowl. In all honesty, I had to stop myself because I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, Cincinnati's destroyed the Chiefs. Can they get past Tennessee? Yeah. Can they beat the Chiefs or the Bills? They've done it already. Is it wild to think that the Bengals can make the Super Bowl? I'm asking. Actually, I'm asking. Is it wild to think that Cincinnati can make the Super Bowl? Um. Okay, I'll say this. No, I don't think they can because I don't think they have enough to beat either Buffalo or Kansas City. Even though, even in the regular season, if both teams fully healthy, they won by twenty. No. They won by uh-uh. two, two and a half nope. touchdowns. No, I I just don't see it. Like I don't see, trust Cincinnati. See, that's the thing, see, and I agree with you on that. You don't see it. But the weird thing is, is it would not shock me at all if it happens. Right. See that, and that you're absolutely right there. I can't see it either. But it's but if you go by teams that have played each other, it's happened already. Um, because Cincy's defense is very hit or miss, like. There's some weeks where they look good, and then there's some weeks when they're giving up a ton of big plays down the field. You see what I'm saying? So, um, 
Yeah, but I'm going to take Cincy to win this game, though. I have a little more faith in them than um, I do the um, uh, Tennessee Titans. Um, I'm in agreement with you in that. I actually have Cincinnati, too. Chris? Man, I'm sorry. Y'all are overreacting. I'm taking Tennessee because I... Okay, all right, all right, all right. Riddle me this. How are we overreacting? Henry, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry, but uh, let's see. I think they did pretty well with Deontay Foreman and Dontrell Hilliard and McNichols, like, in his stead. I mean, they're still running the football. I mean, yes, Julio's out. They still have A.J. Brown, and A.J. Brown ain't chopped liver at all. And everybody's like, oh, Cincinnati, 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 but where did Cincinnati beat the Chiefs at home? Where did Cincinnati beat the Raiders in the playoffs at home? I Home field advantage means a lot, especially in the playoffs, and I think Tennessee's going to take advantage of that. I don't trust these defense. It doesn't. I mean, you could say you don't trust the defense, but home field advantage means a ton. Yeah, and, it does, but okay. Um, who do you see really containing Jamar Chase? You know, who do you see like any? You could take away Jamar Chase, and Joe Burrow's gonna just throw the ball down the field to 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 T Higgins. But my thing is, I just I don't trust Ryan Tannehill. That's just it. Well, Tannehill's not gonna throw thirty or forty times in this game. He's not. Because yeah, Tennessee's how, gonna. How often is Derrick Henry gonna touch the ball? He ain't touching it more than twenty times. It doesn't matter if Derrick Henry touches it. They have other running backs. He's going or... to be their number one. He's going to be the workhorse. Why would you say that? You don't know that. Because I mean, the already... Titans. Have... Why would they backs... have him go out? Why would they have him go and do full contact drills if they weren't gonna give him the workload again? Well, they are. Well, I, they're gonna play him. He's probably gonna be on a pitch count or a snap count. Sorry, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't trust the Bengals away from home. I just don't, and I'd rather take Tennessee over that because the Bengals have showed me nothing on the road, and this is the playoffs. It's a whole different ball game. I mean, you could say, oh, well, they did this in the regular season. Yes, yeah, regular season. It's not the playoffs. All right. What? Are, all right. All right. What did Tannehill, what has Tannehill really done that makes you want to say that, that he would be a good playoff contender? Mm, um, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Like, listen, I get it. Derrick Henry is the reason they won those games in Tennessee last year. Derrick Henry was the reason they won it. That defense did not break, but Derrick Henry took them to the promised land for that for that wild card, those two wild card games, and that's why they lost because Derrick Henry got burnt out. Yeah, he was tired. Now the question is: is which defense is going to show up? If Cincinnati's defense shows up, which it has consistently, they can load the box and make Tannehill beat them. And I trust Cincinnati's defense. Slight more than I do Tennessee's. Ryan, who are you taking? I'm going to take the Bengals. Okay. John, who are you taking? Bengals. Okay. Not saying you're wrong, Chris, but I'm just we're just giving you the reason. Because Tennessee could win. That's not an outlier. I just think Cincinnati, especially <coughs> the fact that Cincinnati didn't have that time off. As much as home field helps, that buy still sometimes hurts teams. Yeah, you know, you can come out rusty or you can come out red. Yep, speaking of the number one seed and having a time off, this one doesn't mean shit. Coming out of a glorious 80 degree San Francisco, going to 12 degree Green Bay. Um, San Fran barely got by in that game by the skin of their teeth. Like, you talk about a game being a tail of two halves. That's exactly what it was because you look at the first half, everything was flowing for them. Jimmy was taking care of the ball. 
They were moving the ball down the field, and Debo was making his carries. He was making getting catches out the backfield. Now, the second half, it seemed like they got away from from that identity. Like, yo, why? If something's working for you, why get away from it? And Jimmy's capable of giving you one interception. You never know what Jimmy you're going to see. If you get good Jimmy, that means he's not turning the ball over. Defensively, I love the way they set the tone uh, early on. They put consistent amounts of pressure on Dak, and they got home to him. And Dallas also beat themselves because of all the penalties that were called. But you lose Nick Bosa, who's your best player on your defense, and he's your version of Aaron Donald. They build that defense around Nick Bosa. And then you lose Fred Warner. Um, and those are two key pieces, but I want to see what Eric Armstead can do. He He's your X Factor. Green Bay, they're back in this position again, another one seed. You win 13 games again for the third straight year on the Matt LaFleur. And Aaron Rodgers has done it once again at an MVP level, and this may be one of the better offenses that Aaron Rodgers has had, probably since the days of Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, and a young Devontae Adams. Remember, Devontae's older now, so he's been there for a while. Um, I think Aaron Jones is going to be key, but what Packers defense shows up? Because I've been saying this all year, too. They play defense in spurts. They look good for a half. They may even look good for a quarter. But somehow, they always just see to take their foot off the gas when it matters most. Um, I like Green Bay in this one. I just don't think the 49ers have enough offensively to keep up with the Packers unless they slow the game down. I think the the biggest key for Green Bay, they have to take away the middle of the field for Debo in the receiving game. Make him earn those passes up the field. They're going to try and think and dump it. So um, I, I like Green Bay in this one. I think Aaron Jones has a big game. And the secondary doesn't have enough to keep up with Green Bay, with Green Bay's weapons. And on top of that, who knows if Nick Bosa or Fred Warner play. Chris, who you got? I got Green Bay because they're going to put nine in the box, take away the run, and make Jimmy Garoppolo beat him with his arm. He can't do it. Um... Oh, forget that. Even if they put, if, even if they don't put nine in the box, they're still gonna be able to stop the run because they're not gonna run it in fucking twelve degree weather. It's fucking gonna be cold. It's an eight fifteen game on Fox. It's gonna be twelve degrees. It's gonna be below freezing when it comes to the wind chill. Yeah, make Jimmy Garoppolo beat him with his arm. Have fun with that. A shit ton of Vaseline. That's all I gotta say. Ryan, who you taking? Wait, who are you taking, Ronnie? Green Bay. Um, I'm taking Green Bay. John. Go Pack, go. Sunday, the Rams. I already know John's pick. He's taking the Rams over the Buccaneers. Buccaneers are a three-point favorite. Like I said, when I first came on, Philly lost that game more than Tampa Bay won it. Like, Tampa just did not look good. They're so injured. Let's be real. Anthony, I mean, Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin, they're not walking through that door anytime soon. Brady's not really on the same page with Scotty Miller, Tyler Johnson, and Brashad Perriman because how many times was he trying to connect with those guys and they were dropping passes? You see what I'm saying? Um, I look at I look at the Rams. That was their most complete win of the year. I think all year long because they were able to get after Kyler Murray and offensively they did it with a consistent offensive attack. I thought that I thought that was key for them. Um, the Rams have the formula to get after Tom Brady. They're going to send guys up the middle. Um, they have the they have an athletic secondary that can cover tight ends. And who's Brady's top target or one of his top targets? Hey, Rob Gronk. And what position does Gronkowski play? Tight end. So don't be surprised if you see Jalen Ramsey on Gronk. He's done it before. Yeah, I could see him doing it again. Um, I like the Rams in this one. I think the Rams can they can get home to Brady. They can slow the game down. But it also depends on Matthew Stafford taking care of the ball. Like If the Rams play how they did on Monday night against the Cardinals, they will win this football game. I like the Rams. 
Chris? I like the Rams because, well, one, their defense is a lot healthier than Philadelphia's. And I think they can get home with that. And their secondary is damn good. I think they're going to be able to move Tom Brady. Uh, so they're going to move Von Miller up to probably, uh, what is it, uh, have him rush as a t- uh, D end. There's no way they're going to come have him coming out of the linebacker position. They're going to have him come out of a D end. They're going to rush four. Ramsey's going to be on Gronk. The Rams are going to win this game. Yeah, and look at it like this. Look at it like this, too. This is why you got Von Miller for this game right here. And don't be shocked if you see uh, Donald spread out to the other end. I can see it. And remember, Von Miller, he has a history against Tom Brady. Do you remember that AFC Championship game? Oh, yes, I do. A couple years back, he was all over Tom. And that got Tom looked like he ate a bad chili dog on the sideline. Oh, and the other thing is, too, is tell me one Tell me one thing. I'm the on the Tampa Bay's defense, who's guarding Cooper Cup? And if you don't know, if someone knows who's guarding Cooper Cup, all right, fine. Who's guarding OBJ? My point exactly. Like, this Tampa second, remember I told you, this Tampa defense hasn't scared me. Like, around this time last year, they were scary. They, they were all on the same page. Playing downhill, stopping the run, rushing the passer. Oh, I don't I got, see I that. I got one more. I got one more. All right, then if you got that, who's guarding Cam Akers? Exactly. I just think the Rams are the more well-rounded team. Yeah, so do I. Ryan, what do you think? Fuck the Rams. Really? You going Brady? <laughs> you going Brady? All I have. And I know John's already going to say fuck Tom Brady. Yep. So he's going Rams. And finally, at 6.30, we have the Bills taking on the Chiefs. KC so is a one- my, KC is now a one-and-a-half point. For, this game's pretty much a pick em. Right. Here, go ahead. So the winner of this game, I think, comes out the AFC. To me, this is the AFC championship game before conference championship. <clears throat> um, Buffalo... They put it all together last week, offensively, defensively, no punts. Every time they had the ball, it ended in in, in six points. Um, I look at, you know, I look at Kansas City, and they got back to the basics as well, putting pressure on the quarterback. And Melvin Ingram has really elevated this entire defense. Um, he he's given them a boost. And what's the key? So succeeding in the playoffs, you got to be able to get home to the passer and rush the quarterback. Plain and simple. Um, when they met the last time, Buffalo went into Arrowhead and they punched the Chiefs in the mouth. That's when I became very concerned with the Kansas City Chiefs because the effort just wasn't there. Like the secondary was getting torched. Uh, Sorensen was getting burned. Now, this is a completely different Chiefs team. And I think Buffalo, they're going to go into this game with a chip on their shoulder. I see this one being high scoring and coming down to the fourth quarter. Give me Mahomes in a close one. I like Kansas City. Mm. Who you got? I'm taking Buffalo because I have a feeling Kansas City's defense is not going to be able to stop the Bills' uh, running game. and. I think the Bills have enough on defense to cause Kansas City to punt just enough times to eat out a victory. Honestly, this is where I feel Kansas City Buffalo is going to miss Tredavious White. <clears throat> like his presence, I think, is really going to be missed in this game, and um, that's what's tough when you lose your number one corner because you pay them the big bucks to cover the other team's top weapon and. I could see Tyreek really having a Tyreek Hill type of game. But you know what? I like how Mahomes is being methodical because he's spreading the ball around to all the other receivers. McCole Hartman's getting catches. By- By- Byron Pringle, Demarcus Robinson, they're all making cat plays as well. And then look at Jarek McKinnon. Can he do it back to back? I want to see that. Well, Buffalo's wanted this game since last year. And now they've. They beat them already in a regular season this year. I think Buffalo – it doesn't matter. It's a regular season. I'm talking about in the playoffs. 
Like everybody's like, oh, regular season. Regular season is meaningless right now. It is meaningless right now. Tell Whenever it, tell that to the Giants when they beat the Patriots in the undefeated season that it meant nothing. What? Tell that to any giant that when they beat the when they beat when the beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl, regular season meant everything then. No, still. Nope. No, regular season and the uh, uh, regular season compared to the playoffs is meaningless. I'm sorry, it is. It's been proven time and time again. But I think Buffalo has enough. I think they've also been wanting this game, and I think they're going to come in prepared. And I have a feeling that the defense is going to do something to put punch uh, Mahomes in the mouth. They're going to move Mahomes and make him really. Uncomfortable. Okay. I like Buffalo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kansas City. Because again, who do you got guarding Hill? Who do you got guarding Kelsey? And then when that defense finally starts getting home, because you know, the regular season doesn't mean anything. That defense starts getting rabid in fucking playoff, playoff time when they take time off in the regular season. The difference is, is that Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs pulls shit out of his ass. Exactly, exactly. And Ronnie, I think you just said it best. Like I said, you just kind of led me into the point I just made a couple of minutes ago. This is where the Bills miss Tredavious White, because if he's playing, he's hands down guarding Tyreek Hill. And if home field advantage means everything? Those Chiefs give me fans, the Chiefs. Yeah, give me the Chiefs. Hands down, give me Patty Mahomes. Ryan, who you taking? Um, taking the Bills. Okay. John? Patty Mahomes. I will say this. I will say this. If I'm the Bengals, I am hoping for the Bills to win. Because I, I mean, think, either way. Because I think... Either way. Because I per- well, I personally think... If the Bills win, the Bengals have a better shot at beating the Bills. If the Chiefs win, nah, good, I don't, good nah. fucking luck. No, I'm saying if the Chiefs nah. win, good fucking luck. Nah, I don't see it. I don't see them beating either Buffalo or Kansas City. I don't think. Okay, so I ask you this question. Who on Cincinnati can can stick with, with, with uh, Stephon Diggs? They don't have a good amount of people that can get there, but they have guys that can get home and make sure and keep – uh, and keep both those mobile quarterbacks in the pocket. All right, what I'm saying is like, all right, you're saying Cincinnati, you'd want to play Buffalo. In Buffalo? Have fun with that. I'd rather play since I'd rather play Kansas City and Arrowhead. Okay, I'm going to say this right now. Cincinnati's used to playing in fucking 30 degree, we- uh, 20, zero degree weather. So playing in the cold in Buffalo and the Chiefs, it doesn't really matter either way. Yeah, here's the problem, though, too. The Bills fans are always liquored up, so they might be too drunk to realize that they fucking are playing a game. God damn it, you have Ryan Fitzpatrick out in a Bills game fucking without a shirt on rooting for what team? I don't know because he played on both of them. <laughs> All right. There's a difference, first off. I I, I, ha- I can't believe I have to explain this, but there's a difference between – cold in Cincinnati and the blistering cold of Buffalo, which is damn near Canada. Uh, doesn't, doesn't, Cincinnati, doesn't Cincinnati play by the fucking water? On the southern part of Ohio. Which still it's, gets uh, zero fucking degrees yeah. when it's cold. <clears throat> not really. Not in January. In right. Buffalo, in Buffalo, in December, unless it's wearing a warm front, it's fucking ten. Well, fine. Apparently, I don't know shit then. I'm just saying because you're talking to a person who lived in upstate New York. Yeah, and you're talking there to is- someone that understands there weather. Is- and you're talking to someone that understands weather, like gambling, dude. When it comes to weather, I get it. Cincinnati rather play Buffalo. 
A, because it's closer. B, even though the fan base is there, that's a better defense to play against for Cincinnati. All right, Kansas Buffalo. City, Kansas City off. gets home. All right, yeah. When's the last time Buffalo in the playoffs lost in Buffalo? When? In the playoffs, lost in Buffalo. Okay, okay, you're looking at history, dude. We're talking about now. We're talking about today. Yeah. History repeats itself. History repeats itself. And that's why I took Buffalo over New England last week. Why? Because Buffalo plays their fucking asses off in Buffalo in the playoffs. Where 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 did the where did the circle of the wagons ha- game happen? In Rich Stadium in Buffalo, frozen ass Buffalo, and I, again as somebody who actually lived in upstate New York, who dude, there's a difference. There is a big difference in the cold in upstate New York, in Buffalo and Rochester, than there is here and definitely in Ohio. When you look at you. The- all you want there is a big fucking difference so then tell me Chris are you going to put money on any of these fucking games no I don't gamble anyone else want to say it to me then I'm going by how I see these games I'm going by how something looks when you look at it it looks that way Buffalo has a weak point Cincinnati can exploit that weak point. The question is, is can Cincinnati get home on Josh Allen and keep him in the pocket? Yeah, that's the problem. Because, look, when you play him, I'm coming out in a wide nine technique. So I'm having my two defensive ends split. And I need push from my defensive lineman. You notice more pass rushes are starting to come from the interior of the defensive line. Have you noticed that the last couple of years? Like more guys are being able to get leverage. They can square up and get the, get a a, a quick first snap on the ball from the interior of the defensive line. So I want my defensive tackles on the inside to kind of get that push up front. And that way when Allen sees it, we can set the edge, and we can do all we can to keep them in the pocket. Kansas City can do that. Kansas City has four guys who can literally get to the passer with ease. That's Jerron Reed, that's Chris Jones, who's their best defensive player, Melvin Ingram, and Frank Clark. Steve Spagnolo is going to treat this like he did the Giants those years when he got to the Super Bowl with them. It, it's even, it, well, There's one thing. But if you have guys, because if, if if we were talking strictly about weather, then we should not be sitting here talking about, we should not be talking ever about the Giants when they went into Green Bay in negative 13 degrees. Yeah, well, the Giants just bought physicality with them. Like exactly. I was telling somebody. Exactly. You're right. It doesn't but, matter. It doesn't matter where, where a team may play. I'm going to give you another perfect example. Look at the 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars. They play in Florida, right? Yep. That was the team that went to the AFC Championship and almost beat the Patriots, right? Look at who they beat the week before. They went to New England in the AFC title game. Pittsburgh. Right. And they beat Pittsburgh right. at their own game. They ran the football. Running the football, a physical offensive line, and a stingy defense, it travels no matter where you play. Listen, I'll say this, and then we'll call it a night. The way you beat Buffalo and the way you beat uh, KC is the exact same way. You have to make sure you close the pocket in on both quarterbacks and make sure they can't break free. If that means yeah. spy, if that means have guys on contain, and get home. If you don't get home on them and make sure they do not get out of the pocket, that's how you beat both these teams. Cincinnati has that on their front four. Now, the question is, though, is if they get out, they're torched because their secondary is not the best. Who, Buffalo? No. Or Kansas City? Cincinnati. Oh, no, their secondary is terrible. So if they can't get home on either one of those two quarterbacks, 
then it's that game, puts pressure and that's game that puts over. pressure on their secondary exactly and that's game over but they have DNs in a front end that can in front uh front uh, and they'll have a quarterback they'll have a spy linebacker in that game I guarantee you all right um you said <laughs> excuse me sorry it's all right said defense in a running game travels, right? For the most part, yeah, you would Chris, say You said that, right? Yeah. Uh, so what does Buffalo have, a defense? Can they shut down Cincinnati's running game? Oh, you better believe they can. Can they shut down Jamar Chase? And if they're playing in, like, snow, which it looks like they may be, according to the weather forecast, We'll see if Joe Burrow could actually throw in the snow. And again, Buffalo runs the football and they play defense. You're you're talking like Joe Burrow is a rookie. Joe Burrow's played <laughs> since Joe Burrow's been in the NFL for a year. He's played in the snow. He can pass in the snow. He's proven that already. The question is, is can a defense scheme get around them? And also, they might not play in Buffalo. They might play in Kansas City. But I'm saying is as a Tennessee, it's it's gonna be forty fucking degrees in Nashville. You are just poo pooing the Titans all over the place. That is just funny. I'm got, sorry because I got no trust. Then tell that to Christian because I got no trust in the fucking Titans either. Yeah, I know. You'll see. Yeah, just like we were going to see Alabama whoop George's ass, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, no, you know, no. That, that, uh, really? That, that, really? That, that, that running quarterback. All right, so I've, I've got pick scores for Wild Card Weekend. Okay. Christian went perfect all six games. Thank you. So he knows shit. Chris, uh-huh. Chris, Ronnie, and John. You all went four for two, and I went three for three. What was my two losses? Uh, I had New England, and what was the other one? Hold on. Let me scroll up here. Chris, why exactly do you trust Tennessee? Let me hear it. Yeah, that's actually that's a good question. Uh, Eagles, Bucks. I took Phil. I thought I took Eagle. I thought I took Tampa. Says here you took Philly. I must. I, do, I do this stuff as you say them. So okay, I might have taken them as a bet, but I didn't put. I I took Tampa. I thought, well, whatever, not a big deal. Either way, I didn't go perfect, so it really doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Somebody's got to get up there and and try to. Throw Christian. So go ahead, Chris. I know me. It was uh, the Raiders in Philly. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Chris, answer Christian's question. What? What exactly makes you trust Tennessee? What? Ex- well, besides the home field advantage and uh-huh. that Cincinnati's young team. With a little less, with a lot less experience than Tennessee in the playoffs, and Vrabel actually probably can game plan for Joe Burrow. Um, the fact Derrick Henry actually is running the football. Um, the fact that uh their running back by committee actually has produced. Uh, the fact that their defense has really started playing out of the league, and Ryan Tannehill. All right, yes, Ryan Tannehill's not the great. Name, but he does produce. And when and I think Tennessee can get to Joe Burrow. See, that's where I disagree with you. I don't know if they can because for the last almost two years now, I've been ranting about the fact that Tennessee, they can't get home to the quarterback. They got Bud Dupree for that reason alone. And he's had a tough time staying, um, staying healthy and on the field. My thing is, it just seems like if Tennessee's not blitzing, they're not getting home to the quarterback. All right, but the other thing is also, who's Tennessee used to playing in the playoffs when it comes to getting to the quarterback? The one you can't get to. 
Lamar Jackson. Like, wh- why did they lose last year? When they lost last year, it was because of Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and Baltimore okay. took away Derrick Henry. Okay. And yeah, and, you know, and you're yeah, the thing is, that to the quarterback, when you're when you're playing Lamar Jackson, getting to the quarterback is like you know a uh, monument. Hold on, hold on, hold on, like, hold on. Good. Hold on. You're gonna use that example. Cincinnati injured Lamar Jackson this year. Did they injure him in the field? No, they injured him in like probably when he's running in the open field. He still, they still were able to catch him. Tannehill's not Lamar Jackson, and neither is Joe Burrow. That's it, right there. But Joe Burrow is not Lamar okay, riddle Jackson. Me, riddle me this: Who's guarding Mixon? Who's guarding Chase? Who's guarding Mixon? Well, they're gonna well, actually fucking Tennessee defense can stop a running back. Mixon's not how much you want to bet. Mixon's not used as a traditional running back. Oh, I know that he's gonna catch passes out of the backfield, and that's, that's where the- they're gonna get screwed. What? Yeah, game plan for this. He's done it before, and when it comes to that, I trust Mike Vrabel over Cincinnati's coach. I'm sorry, I do. It's a lot more experience on Tennessee side, and and the playoffs experience means a hell of a lot. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes me believe Tennessee. Well, Can- I'll say this right now, everybody. I'm putting money on Cincinnati, so ha, huh, okay, fine, whatever. And the fact is, I also picked Tennessee, you know, in the preseason, so I'm not going to go back on that. People forget that in the preseason, I picked Tennessee. So, to, you know, to be the AFC championship game, but to actually be in the Super Bowl. So I'm not going back on that yet. I got to go find that. I don't think you had them in the Super Bowl. You didn't have Tennessee Green Bay. You had Green Bay making it. You didn't. I don't think you had Tennessee. Yeah, I had Tennessee getting to the Super Bowl. Remember? I got to go find the paperwork. I don't back- think I don't think you did. I don't think no. you did. I think you. Ha- I know you had Green Bay winning it. I don't think you had Tennessee in the AFC. I had Green Bay winning it over Tennessee. You can go back. You can I'm go gonna, back. When I, I'm gonna go I find. Have- I'm gonna go find it. So don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, it makes as much sense as. Uh, never mind. I'm not gonna go there. Yeah, yeah. You can make fun all you want, but that is what I had in the preseason. I had Green Bay, Tennessee. Oh, and I had Buffalo, Green Bay. I had, uh, what did uh, I have? What did I have, Ronnie? Didn't you have a repeat? I think you might have had a repeat. I think, yeah, I, I don't think that's gonna happen. I have a Green Bay, Kansas City now. It was one of I those still, two. Still think it's gonna be a repeat. Yeah. But all right. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to our show. If you like what you heard, please follow us on all social media accounts at the Nerd Report Network. Follow us individually at F and Ronnie. At Chips NXC. At the Zombie Master. At, at Daily Blitz underscore 61. At Stuncock STL. And if you. Stuncock! Yeah. As well as follow us on Twitch under the Nerdport Network. Do not follow us on iTunes because you will not be getting any new episodes. Because fuck you. Fuck you, Brenda. Uh, Fuck you very much, Miss Lippy. Yes. Uh, join us. Join me back here probably either later tonight or tomorrow as I be playing through uh, Lollipop Chainsaw and been playing through games through all the week. I've been doing like five and a half hour streams. That's fucking ridiculous, bro. Dude, I just what? beat God, I just beat God of War last night. Didn't you just start that the night before uh, last? Yeah, I beat it in two days. Ten hours. Oh, dear God. That's a fucking step, dude. That's a speed play. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Larry Pop Chainsaw, don't be looking up her skirt. That's half the fucking fun of the no, The kidding. fucking whole point of the game. Yeah, yeah be a misogynist to an 18 year old cheerleader that kills zombies. That's not real, by the way. That's not real. That's not real. Uh, but, so, d- digital misogyny, I guess? Uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, Blood Rain on Playboy. 
And with that being said, thank you everybody for listening. Like, follow, and subscribe on all our social media accounts on YouTube, Facebook, and t- Twitch. And with that being said, that is our show, and Bobby Bonilla is still getting paid. Good night. We're fucking DJs. <laughs>